All right, all right. So everything looks good. We are live. So um, I know I started like 10 minutes early. I've been doing that a lot lately. I feel like I should, you know, just start these at 6.50 or 6.45, but, or 7 o'clock, whatever it is, um, at least my time. So, okay, futures are up, so that's a good thing. Um, we'll let some people jump in. For those who are here, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Appreciate you guys for doing so already, but if you are already here and you want more ideas, the more likes we get, the more people that join, the more ideas we got. So it should be a fun time. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's for me, it's fun. It's like you know, I, I enjoy doing it. So it's it's you know, it, it's it's a lot of fun. So um, before people jump in, I'll I'll jump over huge because I was actually just looking. I don't really know if um, I don't know how to like do diligence behind it, but based on what I'm seeing, it's like you know, 130 or so. Yeah, we hit that low of 128 on the daily on Friday, but uh, a 130 so double looks like a double bottom here. We kind of have a boom pop up boom again came back almost a triple bottom right around that 125 130 area um so it doesn't look bad it's got some momentum had a lot of uh, volume i know i saw some people talking about it on twitter i believe on friday thursday friday so um that said i mean i don't know i'm not sure what's what's driving it uh, maybe it's just the sector expecting some you know some biopharma plays to heat up some um yeah some pharma plays to heat up so if there is anything behind it, and that's awesome. Um, then it has a lot more to the upside. This is a this is like a bottom play that you know looking for a bottom bounce. So resistance is going to be at that 175, and then after that it looks like two bucks, um, 185, then two bucks. So that's kind of the next areas there at least uh, on on huge. Um, QLGN is going to be interesting because QLGN is going to be it, it, it's it's kind of a a waiting a waiting game here. So I don't really know. It seems like okay, it bounced off at 318. So if I can zoom out and see if we can pull something um, off like the weekly chart or off something. So 318 is the low that we're looking at. So it it's really uh, one of those situations where we're kind of making new lows and it sucks because at the end of the day, like we know why, you know, like we have the the idea behind the play. The, the behind the play is that they they're uh, missubmitted for an emergency youth authorization. Um, so they need to get the approval of that authorization for their COVID antibody test, right? If that happens, that's going to be awesome, right? This is going to be a great play. Um, and it should get a nice press release, and it should get run up quite a bit, I would think. Uh, so that's at least how I'm seeing it. But we can we can do, it, at least for now, is we can draw in a little downtrend. So we hit that downtrend a couple times. So for right now, until we break above this downtrend, things aren't looking great. So I have some. But I'm waiting to add here. I'm not going to be adding until either we find um, another support and kind of hold up maybe three dollars. Three dollars could be a whole number natural area. Um, that could be a good spot to load up. But right now, it bounced off that 318 and came back. So for now, I'm just not going to touch it. I'm going to hold what I have. Um, and if the news comes out awesome, you know, it is what it is. I would have loved to add it more, but you know, uh, I don't really want to be just adding blindly as it falls. So I want to see it hold something before I just start adding blindly. So. Um, that's at least my thoughts on uh, QLGN. Um, GNUS big winner this week. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at GNUS. I want to look at SPY too. So we'll we'll let people jump in, and then we'll get into some some really good. You know, hopefully we'll get into some fun stuff um, as we get going. So GNUS bounced, and it actually did pretty well at that one dollar level. So I think someone asked me about this one maybe a week or two weeks ago. Um, we put this we put this trend line in. It was holding that, fell below that trend line, but it came down to that one dollar natural support level bounce off that pretty nice so it's starting to make a move up 125 break over 125 and then we can get going this got this little gap here at 130 so we break over 130 we have a nice you know 10 more cent move probably it looks like um, if we can get that breakout over that you know prior area um, that we came to or at least opened up um, a couple weeks back so that's what I'm be looking at uh, I'm also going to be looking at a lot of um, EV related plays so the solos, the AYROs, um, we even have, I'm, I'm going to be watching um, NEO big time this week because we have earnings on Tuesday, I think after hours, after market closes on Tuesday, I believe. Um, so NEO is going to be huge just to get a whole sense of the sector. But that said, right, generally a lot of the EV plays have been following generally, right? So right now tech's up nicely, up almost 1%. The markets are looking solid. I mean, you know, futures are looking very green for right now, almost a percent. 
um, for tech. So that's a good sign uh, in terms of if you're looking for, you know, obviously if we're going to have a massive red day, right, most of the plays we're looking at are probably going to see some effect, right? They're going to see some effect of that. Either they're going to stay kind of steady. If they had a lot of momentum, they're not, they're going to get held back by this kind of red day or, you know, they'll, they'll be red, you know, and sometimes worse than, than the actual market, maybe down 1%, but, you know, our plays may be down or stuff that we're in might be down two, three, four, five, six percent because, you know, it's taking a bigger hit, right? So, that stinks, but the market's green, so that's that's a good feeling at least. You should be you know feeling good for now, right? So um, let's take a look. KCAC, this is getting going, I believe. Um, did it get? It was getting going, I think, last week, right? Yes, it, on Friday it started popping. So this was looking pretty good. We can probably put in something here, something like that, like a rough downtrend break that we kind of had. Um, we could probably even fix that and make it different, but. We had a bottom, it found some support here at this 1250, 1260, and it started to make higher lows, and it really popped off on Friday, um, which is nice. That looks like that's a solid a solid move. So I would say now we got to break over that, we broke over 20, which is great. Now let's get over this high of 2334, then eventually this high here of 25, and then maybe we have a shot towards that, you know, all-time high level of 28, right, or so. Um, Macy's or Emma's Macy's, right? Yeah, Macy's going into the holidays. So I, I honestly thought I liked some retail plays and I liked a lot of retail plays going into quarter four and stuff. And the vaccine news was great. Okay, like that's, you know, and that's what we saw last week. We had a nice pop on Macy's, but it came back and it's coming back down. So as much as I like the retail plays in going into the holidays, I don't, I'm, I'm, I would personally myself stick away. It doesn't mean that, you know, that they're bad, but I'm personally going to stick away from that just because I'm seeing all these crazy, just, and we're seeing a lot of more stay at home. We're seeing a lot of cases going up. We're seeing all that stuff, whether, you know, you think that's going to affect things or not. I personally don't want to be in, in retail right now. I don't know what's going to happen post holiday period. I don't know if, how the holidays are going to view this. It's going to, be, it's going to be really interesting to see how this, how things go, um, especially going into, you know, Black Friday, which is coming up, right? We got a, like two weeks, not even right, like less than that for till Black Friday. Um, so I'm curious to see how these stocks respond during that period. But personally, for myself, this is a, probably a decent recovery play. If we do, you know, once things reopen kind of fully, um, this is going to be one of those kind of in that same boat of those recovery stocks, the airlines. This chart was like very similar to the airlines. Like look at Macy's, right? Take a look at American Airlines. It's like the same thing. Like a, a, a different type of range that we have to the upside and stuff. But it's the same thing. CCCL, so Carnival Cruise um, or CCL. <laughs> Um, so this is like same, these, these charts are looking very similar. Uh, and so when you see a chart like that, that's a, a, a telltale sign, or at least for now, it's like, you know, that's a recovery play. Like that's a stock that's going to do well when, the, when we see a recovery and they popped up on that vaccine news, which is great. But at the end of the day, it's like, Hey, we got the vaccine news. That's awesome for the future. But right now, you know, things are getting worse as at least they're going to get worse until they get, before they get better. Uh, and so how is the market going to handle that in the next couple of weeks and months? Um, that's that's the question. Um, so, um, so let's see. Uh, CA pop anytime this week. Let me see, look at LCA really quick. And ADMP, I am still in. So that's the thing too. At like seven o'clock in like two minutes, I'll quickly go over the stuff that I'm in. Not that because I mean, I'll just share what I'm doing, and then we'll go into other stuff because you know a lot of people don't care, but for those who do, at least I'll just talk about it, uh, and that's that. So LCA looks had a nice little pop on Friday. Um, and it was doing a nice little job after this, you know, having showing signs of support here. Um, I had this line here, maybe it's gone for whatever reason, but it was showing some signs of support around this 1140, bounce off that beautifully, then came up here. And now, you know, we just got to break back above this 15 ish area, which is seeming like it's going to be the next tough area. So, okay, put in a higher low, fell down now. So we had a low here of 1140. Then we had a low here of 1250. So nice dollar kind of higher low, which is good. And now it's starting to kind of pop back. So we'll see how it, how it plays out today. After hours is also up 2%. So it's actually closed up somewhere like right around here. So it's actually looking a little bit better. Um, it's got to make another 50 cents or so to the upside um, before it can clear out at that level. And then eventually we'll have to see if it tests that 15. That's what I'm looking at for LCA. I'm, I'm in this one long term though. I have bought some in my longer portfolio. So that's what I'm doing on that. FSR was supposed to announce something today. I'm not sure if they ever did. I was looking... I didn't see anything yet. Um, they said something about November 15th that they were supposed to announce something. That's that's Fisker, another EV name that we're talking about. So um, I am still an ADMP. Where we got the Padufa date is today, right? So um, let's take a look. ADMP, so we have this um, nice support right here. So I'm expecting we're going to see some news. Let me, let me just look quickly. 
um, at ADMP really quick just to see. Last, just a quick little check up on you know any headlines and stuff just in case something happened over the weekend. I don't think anything's going to happen over the weekend, right? But um, we should be seeing news very, very soon from them on that approval. So it's got solid support here at 68. I trimmed myself down on this one because I, just in case we have bad news, right? It's, again, it's one of those things where like you, you, you've done all the research behind it. You feel pretty confident about it. So you expect a run up into that kind of release or into that news. And we got it, but it happened you know earlier than I thought it would happen. I thought we'd see a bigger run up now. And we haven't been. So we got some strong support here. Either we're going to fall to the downside. I would not be surprised tomorrow if we see some stop loss hunts. Um, you know, where we see like some, some drawdowns to the downside when nothing happens as potentially people are saying, oh, there's a leak, there's a leak. You know, I saw that happen with a bunch of stocks before in the past, only for them to announce awesome, you know, the, the news comes out after hours and the news is positive and then boom, the stock shoots up, but somebody got an amazing dip down like 50% or 30% from where the stock was trading. So that's why I trim myself because I don't want to be, you know, exposing myself to too much downside risk there. So I trimmed it a little bit, thought we'd see a big news expecting that this week. So. That said, for those who are in here, make sure it's the thumbs up button. I appreciate you guys for doing so already. Um, the more people who hit the thumbs up button, the more people who come in, the more ideas we have in the chat. So that should be awesome. So let me jump through quickly just what I'm in um, before we jump into like other stuff. So right after, but let me look, I'm in Zoom. So first stock that I'm in is Zoom. Um, the reason behind I'm in Zoom, I also have a call option. I only have one for now. I might get more into this week um, and we'll see what happens. Um, or I may day trade it depending upon how strong Zoom looks. So the idea behind Zoom, right, this stock took a beating or took a hit, a nice gap down once we had the vaccine news because a lot of tech stocks, hey, now that there's a vaccine, these tech stocks have been riding high, time for money to be shifting out of tech and into potential like the airlines, right, or, you know, cruise lines or more of those recovery stocks, right? That's what happened on Monday. And then we kind of realized like, okay, cool, but now we have this vaccine, but does that really mean anything? right now it's great for the future but we still have you know a lot of questions in the near term and in terms of the general population getting this vaccine that's not going to happen for months right so then it's like okay and then we see the cases on the rise we're seeing an accelerated you know move up in cases right blowing up right like 180,000 new positive cases in the US i think on friday of the 13th whatever that was friday um and so okay with that we're seeing more shutdowns we're seeing more schools saying hey we're not coming back after Thanksgiving. A lot of colleges are not are not coming back after Thanksgiving, um, and a lot of you know now just you know schools, public schools are going to make have that decision, right? A lot of them have made it, but now we have more that are going to be making that decision, and then even next semester, so post you know holidays, they're going to be doing the same type of thing. So my anticipation is that okay, we have this awesome dip. We're going to get a little of a bounce on on Zoom. It may not come back up and break all time highs. I'm not expecting that. We also have earnings coming soon, so maybe seeing a run up into earnings, and we may be seeing at least a bounce, some sort of a bounce to the upside. I'm targeting this downtrend line, this rough downtrend line that I have put in. So that would put it towards that 460. So I have a 460 option um, contract with a strike price of 460. So we'll see what happens. I also have some shares of Zoom on top of the option. So that's at least what I'm thinking about that, that kind of idea. Large cap, I don't usually play them, but this is an opportunity that I see at least for right now. Out, outside of that, I'm in ADMP, like I said, we just talked about ADMP really quick. Holding support, it's either gonna be good news, bad news, um, and we might see some significant volatility going into that. So we'll see what happens. That should be coming any day, if not tomorrow, right? So we're seeing that, uh, and I've talked about these in the past, so if you have any questions, like, and I don't get to it, it it's in a past video if you, you know, really need to know the answer. Um, as to why I'm in some of these things. ADTX, we're waiting on a COVID emergency youth authorization for an antibody test. Still in it, dead bottom play. It's just taking a while. Um, ADTX, we're waiting on that. Same thing with QLGN. QLGN, we're also waiting on the same same exact, pretty much the same exact thing um, for a COVID antibody test, fast pack. I forget what they're, they're planning on, on have, or they should have that soon. Um, but we've been seeing a breakthrough of the support line. So I'm not looking to add on to this one until I see it kind of hold up and find a new support level. That's my thoughts on at least QLGN for right now. Other than that, ATIF is a China financial low float play. So they just had an offering, offering close. This is more of a technical play. And also I just know from trading ATIF in the past that they announce news all the time. They come out with a press release like once a week minimum, sometimes like three times in a week, if not more. Uh, and so they like to drop news. China low floats are being, you know, starting to be, looks, they seem to be getting accumulated. Some of them are starting to move. 
I'm anticipating the China sector of penny stock for the China penny stock sector. I guess it's not really, a, is it a sector? Cause like they, they're just China stocks. Although as much as like they're in their own kind of sectors, like there could be like some that's in like the financial sector. You could be in the, the EV sector. You could be in like whatever, healthcare, whatever. Um, they all somewhat tend to kind of go sometimes. Like a lot of traders will just see a China stock running and then they'll find another China stock and they'll start bidding it up and then boom, it could take off. So that's kind of what I've noticed in the past. They also love to announce news. So bottoming out here, it looks like 66 cents. If it drops through, it drops through. But as of right now, it's holding up pretty decent on that support. So I bought some here, looking for it to pop. We gotta break over this 85 cent kind of area. Break over that, we should have a shot. We should have a pretty clear shot towards $1. So that's why I like that one too. Um, so that's that. I mean, what else are we in? What else? Um, so we're in those. And then VTVT looking for positive data to come uh, in the near future. So this one's kind of a bottomed out play looking for a nice little run. I'm looking for it to go to two bucks uh, and then we'll see what happens after two bucks. So at least that's my target. Nothing crazy on that on VTVT. Um, if it gets to two bucks before the, any data comes out, I'll be taking some profits and then holding a smaller amount for you know potential data um, and things like that. So that's what I am currently in. Um, and then, you know, we'll be going through some more stuff that I'm looking at, of course, as we have some questions and now we go over some more stuff. Futures are up and then we just quickly tech is looking up. It's getting close to that 1% up, which is awesome. Um, love to see that. It's a good sign at least going into the week. So let me just pull up SPY really quick. So the overall market, at least how I'm seeing the overall market right now. So we have this downturn right here. Um, so from right here, we had all time highs a couple months back. Boom, got close, didn't break them. Now we broke them with that vaccine news. It broke through. Then we came back, immediately tested this trend line, this downtrend line. We broke through, awesome sign, came back, tested it, even better sign, showing it is now a new support level. And then on Friday, pushed back on up. So that's a good thing. I think we went live on Thursday and I was saying, hey, you know, I'm anticipating if things are gonna work out according to plan, I would anticipate the market to be green on Friday because it looks like we're gonna hold this level of support. It happened, awesome, but it easily could have not happened if someone tweeted something or there was some crazy news out. So we'll see. On top of the overall market right now being bullish for right now, it's, it's looking nice. Um, we have Trump tweeting this weekend that he wants a stimulus package. He wants a COVID relief package. Um, and so we've had the ups in the air, we had the talks, but all that stuff, but it hasn't, nothing's come to fruition and he's tweeting again. So. That's at least a good sign for those who, you know, who we want to see stimulus. We want to get that confirmed. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are like, hey, like we need to get, we needed to get this done, you know, three months ago. So uh, I think the market has been, you know, in anticipation that, hey, yeah, yeah. And then now I think we'll see what happens. I don't think the market will move too, too much if we get, hey, it's coming. Or if, you know, if there's some negative news about it, because it's kind of been priced in, I feel like over the past couple months. But that's another fact to watch this week, because we may be getting some news on stimulus because Trump's now talking about it. So um, let's see. Now let me just jump through. I know I, I missed a bunch of uh, comments, but uh, I'm gonna jump through from here and see what I can find and we'll look at some other stuff. So um, let's see, let's see. Uh, I'll take a look at AYRL. Let's take a look at AYRL. AYRO. So popped off of this sub 50-ish and it's moving up. I personally, for me, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm watching it to see how the overall sector stays hot and see what happens, but I don't, I personally don't want to be buying a YRO for like a swing trade. If I'm gonna be buying it, I'm playing momentum here uh, and I'm looking for it to continue a ride to the upside. I think we have room to like 475, five bucks, and then after that, we'll see. If we break over those levels, this could trigger a lot more volume and a lot more people getting eyes on it, which could send it even further if people want to go crazy, you know, this week. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be it's depending upon how the market is reacting. In the past, small caps, pennies, and penny stocks in general, um, these type of plays haven't been super, super hot. So it's going to be weird. It's I think it's coming. It's just had a lot of negative things kind of holding it back in a sense. We've had, you know, the election, we had stimulus talks, we had the summer, everything's, you know, got, it, it's been, a, it's been kind of a, a mess. And I think we're starting to round the corner in terms of playing these and being able to swing them a little more effectively. Um, whereas in, in past, you know, years and months, it was a lot easier, I will say, in, in a sense. Um, it was a little more predictable, I would say. Um, but also at the same time, after March, things were so easy just to be buying dips because everything was running after March. So, that's another factor too. Things have changed. You have to just kind of adapt to how things are going. So this to me, if you're swinging this one, 
you got your nice move, I'm taking my profits. I'm, I mean, I'm maybe riding something, but I'm taking most of my profits here on AYRO. If you're in here from these up, from these levels right here at that 250, bouncing at support multiple times, you had multiple opportunities to grab it and notify and see that pattern happen, you know, again and again. Um, so that's you know, you had opportunities to do that. So for me, it's it's more of a day trade play, not necessarily. Um, let's see, not, not, not necessarily you know, uh, something that I would want to be swing trading. Um, when it comes to, let's see, um, when it comes to all these guys, these guys pumping stuff, people saying in the, in the comments, uh, I'll tell you why these guys and why people make a lot of these videos is because it's not because they're pumping it, to be honest, it's because they get views. So there's just, I'll tell you that right there. There's a lot of people who make workhorse videos who make, you know, these types of videos, they get views. That, that, that's it. That's that. You know, and, and is it a product of people talking about it and getting a lot of people excited about it? You know, I don't know. But a lot of those videos, they get lots of views. And so, um, not necessarily that, that I want to like kind of, that's not what I want. I don't want to do just like that type of stuff. Like at least that's just, you know, I don't really care for just, just making like one type of video like that. Um, it works because in the algorithm with YouTube and stuff, you know, when you start feeding something somebody likes, somebody's involved, somebody's invested into the, these types of stocks that are very popular these days. That's the EV sector. You keep feeding them what they want. The algorithm loves that, so they grow. So that's kind of how that stuff works. It's really, it's not like people are getting paid for this stuff. Like they're not. There's no like weird like scheme going on behind it. Uh, at least I'm not aware of. It's most of the time. It's literally these guys just like these channels. Like they they know what's getting views. They know what people that their subscribers who watch their videos they want, and so they continue to feed them what they want so that they grow the channel, which I don't blame them for growing the channel. And so, you know, they just continue to make the same type of videos. I, you know, that's that. So, all right, so um, let's see, let's see, JG, JG. I'll take a look at JG and see what we got. This actually doesn't look too bad. So it's it looks like it's bottomed out kind of. We have a bottomed out play. So it found some support here at 140, popped up a nice move towards three. So it was a 100% move in a couple of days right there. Uh, it's tech play. And so tech's being, tech's being strong tomorrow. So it should look pretty good. And it found some more support here at that 50 SMA, this blue line. And then it came down to this level, this 170 level, and it's popping up. So now we want to see it break over this two, these, these high, these little wicks right here. You want to see them kind of. You want to see it break over this 215. Then it has some more room up to the upside. And it may have an explosive move up quickly because we saw that it happen uh, back here. So it may have a quick little run. Then it can, it'll come right back down. So be careful if you're in that. Play that quickly. Be ready to take your profits. Have your orders. Have your limit order set um, to the upside. Set you know set your levels that you're looking at as resistance. So in terms of resistance, we might be looking at past areas of highs. So like this area right here, this 235 could be a resistance. And you can be looking at 225, 250, 270 every quarter as is generally an area of resistance. And then also just looking at level two. If you if you have access to level two, um, something even like this, uh, there's better level twos you can use out there. But if you can see, hey, there's a large, you know, there's large size, there's large asks, there's large share size um, sitting at certain price points, that could be an area of resistance. So you may want to be looking to take some profits before that if it starts running up. Um, so that's that. Um, okay, that's JG. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, AMC is good mid to long play. I've been seeing it's been moving a little bit lately, right? So AMC is yeah it moved up again with the uh, on Monday, right? It popped up big time. Um, it's I guess it's not a recovery play. I personally don't really care for it. Um, just me, but again, double bottom it or it came down, had a double bottom here at like 195, found support around two bucks, uh, and now it's coming back down. So it's for me, I would want to see it come back down to like 250 ish, maybe, um, for a, a potential entry. It's it's having its kind of ups and downs, its spikes, so it's going to have its 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 days. Personally, for me, I'm just not really a huge fan of, of, of AMC, just long haul anyway. But for those who, who do like it, you know, I'm not going to, you know trash on it like I, I don't think it's a terrible idea i'm just not a personal huge fan um so reopening play this will be this will probably run as it's been getting a lot of you know push here and there over the past couple months so for a reopening play for a stock like that once the vaccine and once we kind of start to see those recoveries and all those airlines and stuff like that then yeah this is this is probably a decent a decent opportunity i think at least um it'll, it'll move right um alibaba some leap call let me take a look at alibaba 
I was thinking about doing that, but then I was like, um, it's for some leap calls for some other stuff. Um, but I'm going to wait till probably some mid mid like winter, January, February time frame. I'm thinking something like that for me, just for other stocks, more maybe recovery stocks, something like that, that I'm looking at just, you know, um, so Alibaba, it broke out, it broke down below this kind of trend line that we had put in. Um, now it's coming down. So let's see, I'm, I would like to see it kind of find some support in this range. So it's not like a perfect spot, but we can draw on some lines. So for me, it would be like something like this is like a good buy range. So in between these levels is a decent buy because we had this area that was like resistance or now it became support. So we had support on this 240, it hit this level a couple times. We had resistance around this 265. Okay, so now we're under that level. So that's a good sign. So if you're looking to accumulate some Alibaba for either a longer term swing or for like some leap calls or something like that, a good time to be buying in my opinion would be in this range. I like this one as a decent long term play personally. Um, that's just, you know, my opinion. That's just my thoughts on it. But um, this is a decent range, I would say, just based on the chart. I wouldn't anticipate it falls much below this level. I just don't think so. It could. There could totally happen. If it does, then we're looking for like this 231. We have a level we can draw right here. A couple highs we had hit right there. Boom, boom. So that's another area of, of support that we'll, we'll probably see if we do catch that level. Um, so I would want to see it kind of regain this 265 and start making moves back on up. Um, but this does look like a solid play, you know, for the long haul. So that's that. Uh, workhorse, let's take a look. Workhorse group is starting to make some moves. Now we had a pretty, I think we had like a, a bunch of EV. It, it was actually kind of interesting. So EV stocks were generally red. I think like Neo, we had Tesla was red. We had a bunch of other ones that were red on Friday. Workhorse is red as well, but putting in higher lows for, for right now. So we have an uptrend. Um, this is similar to Alibaba, right? So when I put this buy range, so I was looking at this stock, I watched it before and it had a decent range right here that we like, hey, this is a solid area of support. That's a buy range. And boom, it, it, it came into that range. You had a couple days, a couple opportunities. It wasn't like, hey, you know, it, it fell through and then boom, it popped up. You had a couple days, a couple opportunities, you know, to grab it in that, in that range. And now it's starting to make a move back up. Again, for me though, waiting on the USPS contract, right? So for me, I'm not gonna touch workhorse until I know what ha what's going on with that. Um, the sector, I'm, I'm bullish on the sector long-term, but I mean, I'm just personally not gonna touch workhorse until I hear on that. So that's at least my, my plan. But it looks like it's gonna come up here and this is gonna be your area of resistance as it was an area of support and resistance in the past. This low, like, you know, 22 to 23 area is gonna be your interesting level. So you gotta break back above 20, hold above 20, and then we'll see the, the low 20s, see if that happens. Um, let's see. Um, METX, uh, online education with BOXL earnings this week. Yeah, okay, I actually have another one for you too. Um, another earn, uh, online education play. So METX, this is looking decent. So it's bounced off this three, oh, this 240-ish area, making a recovery. That's a nice, I think that's a solid, you know, has a lot of room up to the upside as an online education play. China company, right? You're saying, yep, so China play. So it fits like two molds. Looking for right now, online education, China. That's looking pretty good. Um, then we have BOXL. Um, I've li I'm liking this one, I'm not in it, but I'm, I've, you know, we had this nice little recurve off this, 50, uh, this 200 SMA, looking pretty good. Um, as, you know, it ran pretty big in the past. Um, and it's, you know, one of those online education plays. But I had one here, where is it? AMST is one as well. Um, that is also, a, could be, is it also an online education play? And so what we're seeing with AMST, and it hasn't, I don't think it's very common. Uh, it's not well, well known as of yet, but I think that could change. So it's starting to kind of get close to this. You know, we have some of these wicks here. We can put a downtrend line like that. We can put even one like this that hits a lot more, you know, candles. But it's kind of breaking out or it's trying to perk up to the upside. So I think we're going to start to see this one get some attention this week. And it is, you know, it can be pretty volatile. So we'll see what happens. But I think if this one gets going and it's, it's a low flow too, this one gets going, this one can have, you know, have some move over five bucks, can get really hot. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised this week too if we see a bunch of these online education plays on um, these stocks, right? I would not be surprised if if we start seeing, you know, press releases come out from these companies saying, hey, we're getting ready for, you know, like they could just be fluff, but they could be saying, hey, we're getting ready to use our blah, blah, blah platform for, you know, as more schools go online. I don't know. I think we're going to start to see some of those press releases just to kind of catch on and get some people's attention who may not know some of these stocks are to that sector or have ties to kind of that technology or whatever, or those types of platforms. So that's the thing. So we'll see.
Um, oh yeah, I want to look at Bitcoin too. So Bitcoin, we have some other stocks to look at too. So Bitcoin back above 16,000 right, for right now. Um, it's looking pretty decent. So we have you know this massive uptrend. I'm looking at personally, MARA is my Bitcoin play. Uh, and we can zoom out and see why. So we have this nice, beautiful uptrending support here. I wouldn't be surprised if it cracks below, to be honest, because um, I think this is there's a lot of there's a, getting there's starting to be a lot more eyes on this one. But um, it likes to run Bic, um, Mara and Riot R I O T is another one. They like to run or they like to move in kind of correlation with Bitcoin. So they're not perfect, but when Bitcoin's breaking out to new highs, these stocks are generally moving up. Generally, right. Um, and they're like right behind it. They're like right behind. So if you're watching, if you're going to be trading one of these for a day trade or for even a swing, have Bitcoin pulled up and try to get in on a pullback for a swing. Or if you're looking for a breakout, watch Bitcoin. Okay, it makes a new high. Let's grab some more. Let's grab some riot. And you can probably get a couple cents of a move at a minimum. At a minimum, I think that's usually always there. So low hang sometimes it's just low hanging fruit. You know, you can grab something like that. Um, but that's there's starting to be a lot more eyes on it, so we're gonna to have to see how this kind of reacts. But I'm waiting for it to see if it breaks above this 250. We get above 250 on Mara, which it may happen depending upon how Bitcoin goes tonight. If we wake up tomorrow morning and Bitcoin's pushing 17K, well, and guess what? This one might be pushing over that 250 pre market hours, you know? So it gets going, and then it's gotta break above this, like, you gotta get back up over this 310, 312, and then I really like it. But it's gotta break out of this downtrend, boom, then it can go to the upside. I think it's got a lot of room, but I think we're not gonna see. Mara move up to this level that I'm targeting somewhere up in here. I don't think we're going to see it hit that level until we really get a, a Bitcoin breakout towards 20K. I think we got to push 20K for it to make some really big moves. And if we break above 20K, we break into, you know, all time, we break into new highs, right? Then these stocks should be making some moves. And I would be potentially, we'll see how much volume, see how much momentum they catch. But we can be looking at, you know, getting towards, you know, this $5 level, which I know it's a long shot from where it is now. It's like 100%. But um, they've done it in the past, so it's something that I'm, I'm definitely watching on the back burner for sure, grabbing this one at support. So, um, let's see. Sorry if I'm missing some stuff. I'm going through. Uh, I'm going. I'm going through. Let's see, away from pot stocks and burn. I think weed stocks will have another shot. Um, we'll see. Uh, I think they're going to have another shot as we move in towards um, January-ish time frame. Um, yeah, for those and, and those who are, who are trying to learn the stocks in the two to four dollar range, for example, right? They're a lot. They're a lot more volatile. So you have to understand, like, there's just going to be more volatility in that stuff. And so the way that I look at it is that if I'm looking to play, uh, if I'm like buying Zoom, right? I'm okay. Zoom could be a volatile stock. It's like a larger cap stock, right? That I, I generally don't play stock like this. But you know, I'm not really worried about Zoom going down thirty percent, right? But in a situation where I'm playing, you know, like let's say I was playing like DPW, like DPW could drop 30%, like pretty easily. Could there could be an offering? Who knows? There could be something like that. This could drop. This this stock could drop 30%. I just if I'm playing it, I just have to understand that risk. And so you have there's a whole other kind of risk manager. So you can't be going in necessarily as big, just you know, depending upon your account size, right? So for me, the way that I work my swings is 10% of my you know account size. So. It, I will not go in my my max size of my swing trade will be 10% of my overall account. I won't go heavier than that in a you know a right. Generally, something that's a low float, usually under five five dollars. Sometimes it's you know they could be a little bit higher price depending upon um, stocks. But that's that. And these stocks also you don't you don't hold these long. Like you're you're playing them for the quick. You're playing them for like these spikes. You're not playing them for the long haul holds. Like this is a quick. You're, you're trying to get in it. So dip by or playing a breakout and that's it. You're getting in. You're getting out. Moving on to the next one. Um, they have opportunity to make you know a significantly higher percentage gain in a shorter period of time than your large caps and your apples, your zooms, your Amazons, whatever. Um, but you know that's that. Okay, so TBLT is one that I've been watching, um, and I want to see what it does. Hold up, it's trying to make some you know build some support. I think we're going to see some more press releases from them soon. Um, so TBLT is one that I liked a lot. I thought we'd get a bigger move. We hit 105 in market hours. Let's take a look. If I zoom back out, we hit like 105. Yeah, there's 105. So we, we made a nice move off our support here that we found like the upper 60s around 70 cents. But now what we're seeing is we're seeing it kind of do the same type of thing. We had to move up. Now we came down and we're really building some support. We're building a higher low kind of in a sense around like the mid upper 70s. So 
I think it's a good spot to be grabbing some as we saw how we saw the 2 million in quarter three Amazon sales, which is pretty awesome um, for, you know, for them. Uh, and I think they're going to, they're, they're dropping new products. New products are going to be coming into their, into, into, into Amazon, I believe, and even into Lowe's and stuff like that. So um, they're, they're dropping some new stuff. And I think with the pandemic and everything, they're in that kind of home improvement, kind of like work from home, like on your house or whatever, like tool belts, knee pads, like that tool bags, like that type of stuff. Like that's the kind of um, stuff that they're in. Consumer goods, right? Houseware, like that's what they kind of are, you know, household goods and stuff. So this one, you know, into the holiday period could be pretty solid. So I think it's solid. It's, it's I mean, your downside risk is not that much. I don't think it's going to drop much below this 68, this like, you know, these, these 60s right here. So I think it's fine. I think we'll get some PRs or it may just slowly kind of just grind up in the coming weeks. And I think that's, you know, I think it's a, a pretty safe based on kind of how oversold it is, unless they drop an offering, which I don't believe they will do that um, based on the numbers we're seeing. I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, so that's that. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, IPWR, so that's another EV play, right? So another EV kind of industry, right? IPWR, actually, that's on my list for tomorrow. So that kind of goes into something that before I even got to it. So yeah, this is actually looking solid. So I, I like I like this one. It's it, it's in that EV renewable kind of right sector, which right now has momentum, has some you know move. But this one hasn't really run that much. Um, so I like it. it. It's it's run and it's come back and it's kind of holding up. So this is like one of those stocks where we're putting in some higher lows. We can put in a trend line here for generally. We can put like something like that in, which is looking decent. So it's right at that trend. So it could crack below and maybe hold up around this 526. Or if it drops below, we have some support here. These wicks down, we're like to 485, 475. We have some of these wicks as well. So this is one where if you're looking to play it now, um, you can probably be looking to, like for me, I'm gonna my plan for this one is that I'm gonna be looking to grab some this week um, and you know have room. I'm not gonna be jumping my full position size up here. If it comes down, I'll be looking to add some here around 525. And if it comes down further, Five dollars, usually a natural support, and then if it comes down below that, four seventy-five. Um, wouldn't want to see it drop below that too much, and we'll see what happens depending upon you know the the, the market, depending upon a lot of things. Um, but that's kind of my plan. So I'm looking to accumulate some here. If it runs from there, awesome. Um, but generally, I'll be looking to buy on these dips if it does drop down, because many times we'll be able to get some of those dips. So um, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. TCO buy out by SPD. TCO. We'll look at TCO quick. Well, at least from the chart, we kind of have a, a decent move to the upside. Not something that I personally like. I don't know much about it, so I can't really say too much to be honest. Oh, uh, it's a REIT. It's a REIT. That's what it is. Uh, oh yeah, REITs are starting to get a little bit of a little bit of heat. They're starting to heat up, so I do kind of like that. Um, my well, this is not really kind of on the topic of these type of things, but my favorite REIT here, and I haven't watched what I haven't really looked into the news. I just have it in IRA. Um, is realty income? Pay, they pay a dividend monthly, and they're just I love it. So this is my favorite REIT, at least just long term. I'll watch that one to see what happens. I'm, I'm not a huge fan right now of that stuff, but we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so when it comes to like you guys in the chat talking about options and stuff, so my what I would recommend for you to jump into options um, is probably yeah, like to be honest, it's 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 they're very risky. Let's say, like I'll explain my option play with Zoom for example, just to kind of thought process and the risk. So this is why I wouldn't be jumping in if you're brand new. Um, yeah, I got I was brand new when I started trading options like two years ago, three years ago, um, maybe even longer honestly. Um, I lost all my savings at the time, which was like a couple thousand, but like. You know, at the time, like that stunk. It was horrible, but you know, so it was not fun. And so you, you generally have to go through. Like I feel like most people who ever like uh, make it or whoever, you know, or not even people, just ninety percent of traders are going to lose, right? So there's there's that whole side of things too. But most are going to have to are going to experience that pain before they can get to the kind of like the green pastures in a sense, right? It seems like that's just kind of how it is. You you hear so many successful trader stories, so like yeah, oh, I blew up this many accounts. I did this. You know, and not everyone's gonna have the same exact story, but a lot of times you kind of have to feel the pain. And, and whether you you are un, you know that going in or not subconsciously, you know you're gonna make some small decisions here and there sometimes that are just gonna throw you off. So, okay, so my option contract 
is. So let me go to the options uh, option chain here, and let me pull up. Um, let me pull up 30. I think that's 30. So I have a November 20th expiration date on my Zoom contract. And so what I bought was I bought the 460s. So this is right here. I bought these right here. And I think I paid like 360 for it. So it finished a little bit up off of where I bought it, which is fine. But um, so the reason why I have this, so okay, I pay, this, it, it's, it's cost, this is the price. This is the last price at the close, 381, $3.81. You have to pay that price times 100 for one contract. Uh, and that's how you can trade. That's like how you can buy a call. I bought a call, right? So that's anticipating the stock, or I'm thinking the stock's gonna go up. And if it goes up, you know, this could easily, this contract could easily double on Monday or Tuesday if we, if Zoom makes a move towards that 460, or it doesn't have to get to that level right away, but it's gonna get close. And if it if it goes, if it's below 460 for a call, right? If it's below 460. By the expiration date, so by Friday, I only have until Friday, so it's kind of a risky play, right? If it gets there, or if it's below, right? Let's say it's below 460, which means it's like let's say it's like 450, it closes. Um, that contract is going to be worth zero, it's gonna have no value, okay? So every dollar or everything above 460, that contract will have that intrinsic value. So if okay, let's say Zoom gets to I'm um, potentially targeting like 475, right? Well, then that means that that contract's going to have 15 dollars of intrinsic value which would mean that my investment now is 5x. So my 300 or $3.60 is now 15 or so, uh, and that's by the expiration. So that's the upside, but the downside here is that my $3.60 per contract, right, that 360 bucks could go to zero and I could lose it all, right? So that's kind of the downside. So that's why it's, it's super risky for when you're just starting. But if you understand that, and that's in line with your risk management, and that's fine. Like for me, like that's, you know, for this account size that I've been showing on the channel, that's whatever, like that's, you know, a third, right? That's like a, a fifth or a third, a fifth, a f about a fourth of my max position size for any trade. I will never go in more than 10%. So that's not that bad. If I lost that entire amount, I'm ideally not going to do so. I'll sell it. I'll sell out of it. Um, if I know it's not going to have much value or if we're not going to get there, um, I'll sell out earlier. So I'll take some, I'll take something back. Uh, I won't take the full $360 loss. But at, you know, that's kind of at least my strategy. So I, I'm fine if I lose it, I lose it, right? That, that is what it is. I just know the risk going into it. So um, that's, that's how I'm, I'm gonna play it. But I would recommend for someone who's new to options, what you do is you buy 100 shares of a stock and you sell covered calls. Or if you don't know how to do that or not sure, not sure how to do that, there's tons of videos on YouTube how to do so. I even have one um, going over it. Or what you could also do is you could sell um, puts, like sell a put so you can sell, which means like, okay, Let's say I'll, I'll pull up an example of like, let's, I'll just use Zoom. So let's say I like Zoom for the long haul. I'm going to be a long term investor in Zoom. I say, hey, you know what? I'm going to sell a put for Zoom at like 350. Okay, let's find, let's actually find it right now. So I'm going to sell a put right here. Let's find the 350 puts. Okay, they're just, they're right here. Um, boom, boom, boom. $2.90, three bucks. So you can trade, you can get paid that number, you could sell a put, but then what happens is if Zoom comes down, and let's say Zoom by the expiration here is now below this level, right? It's below that level. You're gonna get filled, and you're going to get assigned the shares of Zoom, so you're going to actually have to buy those shares. But the thing is, you got paid to do so, so you got paid $2.90, right, to do so. So okay, you got the, you got that credit. Um, but now for you, you only do that if you believe in Zoom as a long-term investment and you're completely fine. Like, hey, like if Zoom drops, I'm gonna, I'll buy that dip. I'll, I'll pay that, that price for Zoom. I'm fine with having an average of 350 on Zoom for the long term. So you can do that. That's another way to get into it as well. Um, and if it never hits that level, well, you just collect that premium. So that's kind of how you know how you can kind of go about it. So um, for the, you know, for those who are interested in that stuff, I personally think um, you know that's the best way to get started on it. Although again, at the same time. If you're trying to get started that way, you know, uh, if you're looking to sell covered calls or something like that, then you kind of have to have the amount of money up front for the initial investment of 100 shares of that stock. And for beginners who are looking to get an options, most of them don't. And so they find, okay, well, if I can spend 50 bucks and if I can buy a contract, I'd rather have that kind of low barrier to entry and be able to double my money like that rather than kind of go the slow and steady route, which I know it kind of, it, it stinks, but that's how it should, you know, it, that's everyone, that's how it is. It's, that's how most, you know, people are, it's how most beginner traders are gonna be, but that's that. Um, let's see, 
Sorry, I missed a couple things. I'm gonna zoom on down. ADMP, we're waiting on the news. Uh, again, with ADMP, the news it could be it could be positive, it could be negative, so it's a risk there on that one. So I'm, I trim my position down, but we'll see. VVPR, I, I know we've been talking about this one before in the past on the on the on the lives, but take a look at VVPR. It's it's in a decent spot. Like it, we have a strong support here at that 570ish area. So we bounced off that level before. Let's see if it comes down, but I like that. I like it as a, a it kind of fits that kind of um, like electric kind of area. Like it fits that kind of vibe. It fits that kind of sector that we're looking at that's hot lately. EVs, battery place, stuff like that being hot. So SPCE. I know people who like this one for the long haul. I'm personally not in it. Um, but oh, it's, it's doing nice. It's, it's pushing up. So it's looking good. It's it's making nice. We have this uptrend line right here. It broke back above this level. So now I want to see it kind of get over these these highs right here. This 2260, and then eventually back over this 24 area, um, and that may make a run uh, back up towards these highs. So what we can also probably do is we can probably draw something in. So let me see if I can draw something. So okay, if we were to draw this, here's our larger scale downtrend, and we're testing that line. So we actually may be seeing or maybe priming for a little breakout here on SPCE. And we also could probably, yeah, yeah I'm not gonna mess around with another one. I'm just gonna leave that one in for now. So it's looking pretty good. On a larger, like zooming it yourself back and taking a step back, um, we're, we're testing this downtrend level, which could be a nice breakout to the upside if we can break above. If we can't, well, then I wouldn't be surprised if it comes down and maybe finds support you know, somewhere in here, or maybe it comes down to the bottom of this trend line, uh, and that could be an amazing buy, a dip buy, you know, for eventually a move back on up. But a broader scale look, I like this one for the long haul. The, the bigger picture is setting up, in my opinion, pretty nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know people talk about, let's take a look at IDEX. I know people can say this is like a, also it fits that EV play as well. So we'll talk about IDEX really quick. Um, personally, I'm not in. Um, I haven't looked into it as much. I, look, I don't think I ever traded it. Maybe I did a long time ago, a couple months, many months back. What I did here is it, it found some support here at 80 cents. That's your floor right now. So you have an 80 cent price floor, um, and then it's it's breaking up above um, this 50 SMA, this 200 SMA, so 95. Now I want to see it around hold up around that 95 or one dollar level, and then push on up further. It, it, it the chart is setting like it's it's setting up. If they drop some news, if they drop something like that, this stock is setting up for a potentially explosive move because. What you'll see is that what you like to see for a move like this, right, for an explosive move in the near term, um, what you like to see is like see prior range. So you take a step back, you zoom out. Past couple months, what do we see? A range from 37 cents to four bucks. So we see a prior. Bit. Then we zoom in close and say, hey, it's coiled up. It's like you know, it's getting very tight. It's coiling up. We're not seeing many day-to-day -day fluctuations in terms of the price action. So it's coiled up. You look to buy that buy that at support as close as you can. And then you can be in this for the big spike. Either there's a press release, the sector gets really hot. Um, it's it's a sympathy play or something happens and boom, it can get going. So that's why it, it looks like it's setting up decently. Um, what are you using to view the stock? So I'm using Webull. This is the Webull desktop platform. So I have a video. Here's my like customized layout so I can actually look at like kind of like a lot of stuff on one screen, but it's a little bit small for like for this. So I like to look at the bigger kind of picture. Um, so this is the Webull desktop. There's a link. I have links down below if you want to sign up to deposit 100 bucks and you get three free stocks that expires like in a couple days or if not like tomorrow. Um, that's always valid. I always have those links below. And the thing is with Webull too is that you'll see a lot of people promote it. Uh, the thing about them is that most people who promote this platform like don't actually use it. Uh, I use it. I enjoy it. It's awesome. I think it's great. It's it, There's some little kinks it's got here and there, but ultimately for a free platform, for trading hours from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, and that's pretty awesome. And the mobile app's great, so it's great like mobile. It's I would say it's probably a great bet for someone who's brand new, for someone who is pretty much swing trade focused. You're not in with a ton of money, um, and that's like it's a perfect platform for like the beginner. So it's a step up over Robinhood. There's a lot more access here, and it's better trading hours and all that. So it's a better, better better platform than Robinhood. Robinhood, I would say it's great for just long-term buy and holds. I mean, have your two-factor authentication if they had some issues. Um, but, you know, that's that's my take on, on, on the difference between like Webull and Robinhood. I think Webull, it's night and day. If you're an, if you're even remotely active, I recommend Webull every time. Um, I'll look at Tesla. So for those who are here, for those, I know we have over 100 viewers right now. We only have 33 likes, so I know we can get that up. Um, for those of you guys who have not hit the thumbs up button, 
I would appreciate if you did because that helps out a lot. We get more ideas in the chat, which is great for all of us, right? At the end of the day. Here's my Tesla chart. So we have some higher lows being put in. Beautiful. I think it's at a good spot to buy. I'm personally, if we're going to go off this trend line, and the trend line is to hold, it's just kind of a helpful guide for right now. This is a good spot. And if, if you're you know bullish te on Tesla long term, depends upon your time horizon here on Tesla. But this is looking like a, a good dip buy. Tech's looking like it's up. Let's go back here really quick. Futures, tech is looking solid um, for tomorrow, up almost 1%. So we're looking pretty solid on that. This should probably bounce. Tesla should be up tomorrow. Um, unless there's some other news that's going to be holding it back. We'll see what happens. Um, I know last week it was down a little bit on Friday when the overall market was up. So it's going to be, you know, it's, it's never perfect, but it's at this trend line. So it's at a pretty good support buy area for me. Uh, and then I'm looking for it to break out over this 465. We get back over that level and then we can definitely come up towards that five bucks um, and, and five, I mean, $500 and, and push up a potential new high there as well. So um, that's that. Now let's go look at Amazon. We're seeing kind of a similar, I mean, similar kind of setup, at least lately. We have a, a higher, we have this this top line area that I have in here as our resistance, uh, and then we have an uptrending support. So we are in this channel for right now, and we're towards the bottom of the channel, so it's probably a better buy, um, in my opinion, right now. But if you're looking to be either a short-term trader, swing trader, options trader, okay, that's going to be, you know, it's it's in a weird spot. Either you want to be buying it on the breakout of this of these levels, or buying it like off a of support dip bounce. That's how I would see options. Um, in, in, your, in this range, it's going to be kind of random unless you're getting momentum on the day and you're looking to break over yesterday's high or something like that. Um, but for the long haul, this is a decent buy spot. I think it will eventually break out to the upside at some point in the future. Um, not, you know, I, can't, couldn't, I wish I could tell you when. It, it may just hang out in this range for the next couple of weeks, months, uh, and then eventually you know, there'll be a catalyst either send it up or down, uh, and that'll be what moves it. So that's what I'm looking at. I like it. You know, as a long-term play. So, you know, if, if you're looking at, you know, some long-term holds, I think Tesla's fine. I think, you know, um, Amazon's fine. I think Apple. I mean, those are all, all those solid companies are, are, I mean, are solid buy and hold long-term. So, you're, maybe you're not gonna, you know, see the Neo, you know, thousands percent move, you know, in in a couple weeks, months, whatever it is. But, you know, uh, it depends on your, in your risk tolerance, you know, on things like that. So, I would be. I, like, I'm perfectly fine tying up a larger chunk of money in something like Amazon because I know it's not going to drop 100%. It's not going to fall 50% like a day, you know? So, you know, that's just me. CCL. So, uh, this is more your recovery stock. It's kind of bouncing around. I don't know. Waiting on, on vaccine news, waiting on some more positive news on that front. Let's get some more timelines here. For me, I'm not a huge fan. I'd be looking to buy this one going into the spring as a recovery play. Not right now. There's just too many questions for me in terms of, as of right now, cases flying up, too many questions upon, okay, when this vaccine comes out, how are we going to distribute this? Who's going to get it first? Who's going to get it second? Like, how are we going to do that? All that stuff has got to be ironed out. So until that stuff starts ironing out, yeah, maybe you miss some of the move, the initial move on some of these recovery plays. But for me, I'm not a huge fan. I would be looking, potentially, if you're looking at these, uh, buying some longer term, maybe some leap options. Look up what a leap option is, if you don't know. But some longer term options or longer term calls, if you want to see on the recovery or just buying a chunk of shares and putting it in a longer term account and not worrying about it. Buy a chunk here and say, hey, I don't care. Put your put a good to canceled sell order up for like somewhere up in here and say, hey, I'll sell it when it hits that level. And like, that's it. So like, that's how I would see some of these plays. I'm just not a huge fan. Now they could be great intraday trades if we get positive vaccine news, positive recovery news, positive news on the pandemic, right? They could be good. Light at, the end of the tunnel, light at the end of the tunnel is a good sign for these stocks. Um, let's take a look. Neo, 50 likes. I know, guys, we got to run those likes up, but that's that's a good start. We're 54 likes for now is a good start. Um, we'll get there. We'll, we'll eventually hit 100. I know we'll get there. It's going to take some time. But for those of you guys who, do, who you know want to run that up, I appreciate it. <laughs> so, okay, so here's Neo. Um, so, I, we had that short report. I have a video today talking about a little bit of, of what's going on on the report and things like that. Um, I believe there's some bigger bigger funds, bigger hedge funds, bigger bigger funds that are long NEO right now, buying more. There's the short report. I think at the end of the day, these short reports, uh, they're just kind of potentially manipulation of the price. There, there is some good points in there that I do I do like, but long term, I like NEO. So I'm not a huge, you know, I don't really care. Uh, I would be someone who's buying this one on dips and buying for the longer hold. So for me, I, if, if it does drop below 38 cents, that's my current support, 38.50 or so. That's my current support for right now. If it drops below 40 cents, then we got 38, 
Then we go below there. Then we're in this in this little range. I you know the the twenty five dollar price target by the short report comes off this support right here. So okay, it actually kind of makes some sense. Like okay, like I can kind of see you know that. But I don't know if they ever actually if they actually looked at that and said hey, that's where it it, it may go to. But um, if it gets anywhere near there, I'm gonna be buying it for sure. So at least that's my plan for for Neo. Um, we have earnings on the 17th, so Tuesday, I believe, after hours. So watching earnings for Neo, that could be you know big. It, 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 they have to, I think they have to blow it away. If they don't blow it away, uh, and when I say blow it away, um, they have to you know over deliver on on a lot of numbers that they were kind of expecting. I think. Um, or over deliver on like deliveries and stuff like that, which I think we kind of have a decent idea of the delivery numbers um, as it is. So that's, I'm watching that for Tuesday. I think it's gonna be very volatile into Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and then even Wednesday. Uh, and then after that, maybe things kind of shake out and we kind of get a better spot. Either it keeps running or maybe we find support or it dips down or something like that. And then we can look to add um, for some longer term plays. I, that's just that's how I, you know, I see it. DKNG, DraftKings. Um, so, what we have here is DraftKings. We have this trend line right here. So past couple months, we had this little uptrend. It blew up and then it came back down, found the support and then eventually fell through. Okay, so it found some support here at 35. Now it's pushing up and now we're testing this uptrend line. So we'll, this prior level of support now becomes resistance. Now we're testing that level. So I wanna see us get up here and we're looking pretty, we're looking decently strong. So it's a decent reversal. So it's starting to make that move up. So I like DraftKings. I wanna see it now make some moves towards this 48 and then eventually 50 and then 52. Those are kind of my levels I want to see on DraftKings. 48, 50, 52. Um, those are some decent spots, I think, um, for DraftKings to start making moves to. If it doesn't, if it starts pulling back, then I want to see 38, 50 or so hold. And if it can't, then, then you have that $35 support for right now. So I, I don't anticipate it dropping below $35, but you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the market ultimately you know tells us uh, as the next couple you know weeks go on. Um, MDLY, let's take a look at MDLY. MDLY. This one actually, do I have it on my list? Oh, I do. I do have it on the list. So I was look. So it's on my list for you know to be watching on, on high watch for tomorrow. So this is getting going. This is starting to put up some decent. I mean, when you look at a stock like this, it has range. I mean, look at the, look at these spikes. I mean, we're playing that for the spike. We're playing for the range. So a stock that's under seven bucks, I mean, under seven bucks puts us, you know, still down in here. It looks decent for me, like down in this level. You do have to look at this though and say, hey, it can come down to five bucks. It can come down to this 450. So understand that. So for me, it wouldn't be a large position, um, but I'm looking to probably grab something on Monday or Tuesday. We'll see what happens this week. Grab something for a spike. Uh, I mean, look at these, these insane spikes. We're not in a in a time though. Like right now, we're just pers like we're just honestly not in a period where we're gonna be expecting moves like this. The market for a lot of these small caps and pennies has not been very hot, but that's changing. So as that changes, all you need is one, one to change it. And so I think we, you know at some point we're gonna get one big time, couple hundred percent, thousand percent mover. Uh, and this one has you know based on the chart, it has you know look at these spikes. It has that potential to do something like that. So I think it's a decent swing. Um, let's see, futures ripping. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I like futures looking solid. So here it is. So okay, they're, they're coming back a little bit off where they just were when we last checked in, but they're still green. Um, green as as can be. So that's that's good, and we'll see ultimately what happens. Usually, you know, Monday mornings you can get some good news or bad news, obviously. Um, so we'll see what happens by tomorrow morning. Things can you know, everything can change overnight, as we saw last week. We had no idea we we're gonna wake up Monday morning with the vaccine news. You know, we just didn't know. Um, let's take a look. FCEL. I know FCEL is solid. Uh, I mean, it has been solid. Yeah, look at that beauty. Uh, it was just, it was honestly a better buy at two bucks. So F FCEL is a great buy, I think, towards $2. Uh, and then, you know, as it moves up, it may continue to push up um, as the sector has been pretty hot and people may be starting to find this one. So it did pretty well on Friday, pushed towards three, but three bucks is going to be our next area of resistance now. Break above three, then we look to like 325, 350. 350 would be a great a great breakout if we can get over 350. So uh, it's on watch list for me. I'm not personally going to swing trade it. If I'm going to trade it, it's going to be a day trade, either like about three dollars, a three dollar breakout, or a three dollar fifty cent breakout, something like that, for a quick short couple percent. But you know, other than that, I'm just you know I would like to buy it for a swing down towards two. That's at least me. 
ATIF is looking. I think it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's. It, I mean, it has a potential. I mean, it has a beautiful potential for either just literally like news tomorrow morning, um, where it could just we can just wake up tomorrow morning and it may just hit like eighty five cents a dollar. Quick, quick news. You know, it may just happen. So this stock loves to announce news. Take a look at these spikes. They love it. They love to drop news all the time. Just had an offering. Offering closed, and we're sitting here at a bottomed out area of support around the mid to upper sixty cent level. I think it's a great spot for at least a nice 10%, 15% move towards 85 cents and then potentially towards a dollar if we get above that level. So I think it's fine. Um, I like it as a China play as well. China sector potentially getting hot. Uh, and then that's that. ACST, kind of also a similar bottomed out play, but we have that 50 SMA here at like 20 cents. So, okay, there you go. But I, want, I would want to see this one breaking above 30 cents. It gets above 30 cents and then it has this nice, beautiful gap. That would look just absolutely gorgeous if it can got if it got into that gap but for right now it's something that you can maybe start accumulating i would be something to be accumulating i don't know much of the due diligence behind it um but the chart looks pretty good to me so i think this is you know a, a nice bottom play um let's see where it's it's in the uh, biotech so okay this is this is a bottomed out biotech play into the end of the year at least generally like to go like to get going so um i like that um, NAO tomorrow. I think I personally would not be surprised if it pulls back. Or, but um, it's going to be how the sector is, how we how this, the sentiment in the sector. Okay, we had that short report. Does that mean anything? Absolutely not. But they did present some valid arguments in there that I can understand why. Could it just be kind of like a, a scare tactic to get the stock price to drop so they can buy up cheaper shares? Maybe. You know, that's that. I mean, I think ultimately what the short report was talking about for NAO. Um, was it, it was kind of presenting some some arguments as to hey this is not like this is not the best thing you know it's not the it's not the next Tesla just yet um, they got a lot of work to do before they become a, a big time competitor right with Tesla in terms of how they were talking about how Tesla is actually selling more vehicles in China than Neo um, and and things like that and Model Y as a competitor and stuff like that so. You know, that's uh, we'll see what happens. It's it's a longer term play. So you know, do you believe that Neil will be around in, in five years? If you do, then I think it's a perfectly great, you know, perfectly fine investment that has a lot more upside as the sector is heating up, as the industry, the EV in general, um, kind of whole market is just exploding. So, um, TBLT break over a dollar. I mean, it's it might be one of those grinders as of right now. I think TBLT is just going to be a grinder. I think there's I, you're sitting here at a pretty beautiful. I mean, I think it's a it's a good spot to be buying more. Uh, I think it still hasn't been getting found. I think there's still going to be a lot more um, potential news coming out, uh, and I don't see any problem with it right now. I really don't. So for me, I think this mid to upper 70s level of support is fine. If it dips down below, okay, your floor is in the mid 60s. I think that's a you know a decent risk reward here for a much bigger upside on TBLT. They should be announcing news soon um, of their new um, new products they have. They had a, a patent. There's some new stuff that they have in the background that they should be announcing soon. I would think, and so that could be get what gets it going. It, the only problem is that they had their earnings, they had that news of two million dollars in quarter three um, Amazon sales, they had that at like kind of poor times. The market, just in general, for small caps hasn't been hot. So if the market heats up for these stocks, this is going to be a stock that I'm watching and I'll be in, you know, um, big time, you know, at, at these levels. I think it's going to offer a lot of upside, you know, um, compared to the risk to the downside. I just think that it's going to have a lot more potential. Uh, I'll take a look at uh, Disney, DIS. So Disney, we had a little push up. So Disney's like, you know, looking decent. Had a gap up. Oh, that was on Monday, right? So we had a gap up. Uh, and now I guess the recovery type of play. We take a look at Disney's chart. It, it, it resembles that of like American Airlines. So look at that, right? It resembles the same, the same thing except with a much better recovery, right? So Disney's back to like where it was back pre-pandemic. Whereas like your other recovery stocks aren't. So I think it's been looking strong. It's looking like a solid recovery play though too. So market goes up, Disney goes up is generally how we're looking. So I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't be a big fan of buying it up here. Although if you're investing for the long haul, then I don't think it really matters. You, you buy it here and, and you're investing for the long term. So you don't really care about Disney's price action today, tomorrow. But it's got to break above this one. I think it's really got to hold around this level of 137. Based on some of these highs, I'll put, I'll put a line in here. This level of resistance in the past is now potentially going to hold up a support. So we've got a decent level here. If it drops below that, then we may be looking at like 130 uh, if it comes down that low. But for now, I would like to see it hold up around this 137, hold that level, and start making a move back up. And then it, it's not far off from, from these highs, from this 153. It's really not that far off. 
So if we can break over that level, that would probably be a nice breakout to the upside. So um, let's take a look, NCTY. NCTY. Oh yeah, this is a nice one I was looking at. Um, I mean, look at this, beautiful. Just putting in higher lows, rounding the corner kind of like it's bound, it really rounded itself out here at this two hour support and then it's rounding itself up. I like it a lot. I'm not personally in. Uh, I think I talked about it in a video recently too, but it's a China play, um, rounding the corner. It's making some solid moves and some solid progress um, to the upside. So I'm liking it right now. Um, ideally the best entry is closer to two, but it may not happen. So you may have to just kind of play the higher lows as it rounds itself up, but a lot of upside potential. There's a lot of range uh, on this one. SRNE. So it found some support at that 200 SMA, which is a good sign for right now. Around six bucks, it did dip down to its 520, but it's six bucks. It looks like it's decent support for right now. So yeah, I wouldn't want to see it drop much more. I would like to see it now make a, a recovery move back on up and start you know, getting towards that seven, eight dollars. That's what I would like to see. So I personally wouldn't like it down below six, personally. Um, if it wicks down below like we saw right here, okay, that's one thing. But I want to see it hold six bucks now. So um, look at LI. LI is going to be the same. It's going to be very predicated. This is interesting. Like look at these, the range that you see on, on, on Lee um, is nuts. So you broke over this level right here, this 30 bucks, and you immediately went to 40, and then boom, right back down. So these are some crazy stocks. The EV sector in general, and I'll pull up at least a bunch of the ones that I have on my list in the EV sector. Um, if you want, if you can see them on the side, and I'll, I'll go to FSR next too. Um, but they they're extremely volatile. So if the overall sector's up, you're looking at Tesla, you're looking at Neo, you're looking at you know Lee, you're looking at a bunch of those, and they're moving up. Then they other ones that are lagging could be good plays. Um, and they're also just great scalp, intraday scalp plays. I mean, these things are moving a lot intraday. So if you're playing options or you don't want to get that risky and play options and you want to be someone who plays, you know, just pretty much, you want to just play shares, you can still, there's like 5% move swings up and down intraday. It's like happening every single day at a minimum. Like it's, it's like, it's nuts. So, so that's that at least. I think there's a lot of room. And then let me look at FSR really quick. There she is. FSR, so now this is gonna be interesting this week. So I wanna see what happens. It's breaking out of this downtrend, right? So I wanna see, of course, it holding up here, maybe holding like $15 support. I wouldn't wanna see it drop below. I mean, I'm in it for the long haul, so I don't, you know, it's gonna do what it does. I don't really care, but um, I wanna see what it does. If it, if it starts pushing up and gets towards that 20 bucks, I think there's a price target of like $22 out now on it. Um, so it's starting to get some coverage. So it, this may have a magnet towards that 20 bucks, 22 bucks. As the sector stays hot, um, and again, though, this is a company that hasn't actually produced vehicles yet. They have prototypes, they have something like that, but their production doesn't begin until 2022, end of 2022. So as this stock potentially, right, if it starts running, I'm someone who's in it, but as it starts running, I would be skeptical of it, you know, to a degree. Um, I know we saw what happened with Nikola, right? And we had that whole thing. And so you can have, you can make that argument for a lot of these other stocks like Neo, like Lee, like uh, Xpeng, XPEV. Um, that actually have vehicles on the road that are creating vehicles that have you know orders right, you can make the argument like hey like ne uh, Nikola went to hundred bucks you know why you know why can't these stocks go to hundred bucks you can make that argument I I, I totally see it um, but at some point it starts making a move a little too fast and then it's, you know it it could be you know you could be careful if you're looking for just a swing trade or options be careful when that happens because you can get these massive swings up and down and it can either shake you out or you can just happen to be in the wrong contract at the wrong time. And maybe the move happens to the, to the price target that you have, either up or down, but it just takes an extra week or it takes a couple extra days and your contract expires worthless. And so that's how you can get screwed over. Um, so I, I would just be careful with a lot of those plays personally. Um, let's see, PLTR, let's take a look at PLTR. This guy's looking, this is looking good. Um, so, we looked at this one on Thursday, I think, on the live. But now, what do we have here? So we have a decent support level we can put in. We can put something in right around this level. So it looks like this 1450 or so holding up as support for right now. A couple candles bottomed out there, right? And so now we're seeing that's our new floor. We drop below that, then maybe you have some of these wicks to the downside. But that's a good support that we're building up right here. So I like it. Um, I, I think it's. A, I also like it as a longer term play. So I just don't really think it's a. It's going to get a lot of attention now. 
We're going to go through a period, though, of time eventually when a lot of these hot stocks now that you know we keep talking about that are running up, that we, we still we may still like them for the long term, but you know we're going to go through a period where they're going to pull back or they're going to consolidate or they're going to hold up. You know They're not going to do too much wild swings um, anymore. Um, NETE, good swing play. Let's take a look. Um, I actually think it's a solid one, um, but ideally you'd want to get an average closer to five bucks. So that's my thing. Um, NETE is actually pretty, uh, let, me, let me show you guys, for those who don't know, um, here it is. This is the, the neat NETE net element. The reason why this is an EV play is this right here. Here's why, because they have um, an, a merger agreement with Monologies. So any net element is an actual like the EV company, but Mullen Technologies is, and take a look at some of their cars that they have. This actually looks pretty cool. Um, so their Dragonfly K50, so it's actually pretty sick, I think. So it could get, it, this could be one of those hype plays though, like where you see like a, like a crazy looking car like this that can get hyped up. So I can see a massive run, and it's done in the past, but I could see a massive run, you know, looming in the future. You know, it made a, a big run there, but I can see it happening again. Uh, and so I, personally, I would like an entry closer to six bucks. Um, under six would be awesome, uh, but it may start moving up. So it, it, it may have a lot more range to the upside towards 10 bucks. So I, I think 10 bucks would be a good spot, at least for now. Hey, appreciate appreciate the donations. <laughs> Top plays 2021. Uh, and then I'll jump back to some other ones, that I, that I, other things I've seen to comment. So um, when it comes to 2021, so what I'm looking at right now is right now we're seeing, we've been seeing in general, a lot of tech stocks ripping. So let me show you guys some, some things that I've been seeing, right? So Zoom, right? We look at Zoom, massive tech play. I'm actually in it for a quick swing, right? Online learning, things like that. So we'll see what happens. But there's your Zoom, right? We look at Apple, AAPM. Apple moving up huge, had a little bit of a pullback, but then it's starting to break out of this downtrend, right? Looking at those stocks, looking at Amazon, uh, AMZN. Um, here it is, let me pull it up. And so, you know, in this little, little range, a lot of these tech stocks, a lot of these, these stocks, um, even the NEOs, those stocks, have been running up massively. But in the meantime, I think what we're gonna see into 2021, I think we're gonna see a secondary boom in the renewable um, in the renewable industry. Now, okay, we kind of got that. So I'll look at TAN uh, as an example. This is an ETF, a solar kind of ETF. So it's run up huge, but into 2021, right? I love the EV sector, but it's got a lot of, it's getting a lot of hype. So, okay, it's got that, but I like a lot of these stocks. And I made a video going over some of the top um, green energy stocks uh, when it comes to the Biden presidency. So I made a video going over that a couple, like last week or something like that. I am very bullish on these stocks. I want them to pull back if they can, but then I'm ultimately gonna see when he takes over, right? As long as that happens, again, there's, you know, stuff like that, right? Um, <laughs> uh, he takes over, we're gonna see, I think, a very big, bigger, a much bigger run in this sector. I think we're ultimately gonna see a longer term EV run. So I wanna see those stocks pulling back. I love FSR for the long haul, beautiful play. Um, but some of these, like FSLR is one that let it pull back here and let's scoop it up here. I think under $100 is only, you know, only a matter of time before this thing pops up, you know, significantly uh, and really gets going over 100 bucks. So. Uh, that's that uh, SBE is another one I think someone was saying in the chat too. Um, this is looking very bullish. I like this one next for into next year as well. So it's one of those as well. So it fits that same kind of um, renewable kind of um, EV, that kind of industry, that's, that whole thing I think is, is, is hot. So I think it will stay hot. I wanna see pullbacks in the short term, but ultimately long term, that's what I wanna see. So we'll see what happens, but that's that. So um, let's see, Arsimoto FUV is another EV play. FUV, let's say, and it's coming up. So Arsimoto is, here it is. Um, it's at this trend line. So Monday's gonna be very interesting. Do we open above this line? If we do, then I wanna see it get over eight, and I wanna see it holding up around $8 or more. If it can open and close above that level, that's awesome. That may make a, a move, a, a nice little push to the upside going forward. So um, JD, let's take a look at JD. JD is looking solid, actually. Um, so it's a retail play. Um, so I'm not sure, I don't know much about it, but what I do know, I just quickly looking at the chart, 50 SMA has been an amazing dip buy. So buying at this blue line, this 50 simple moving average or MA50 um, on Webull, that's what they have, the MA50 line, um, same thing. So it's bouncing off this 50 SMA like every single time, but now what do we see? We have a resistance right up here at that 92, 97, 77 area. So what I wanna see is now, do we break above? Okay, after hours, we push to 93. 
So after hours, we're actually up here. We're a little bit above this high. That's a good sign. But do we open above that? And can we consistently open and close two days above that level? That would be an awesome move to the upside. So it's looking like a breakout play. I like it. But ultimately, for me, I personally like dip buy. So for me, I would like a dip buy towards this 80 you know, bucks if it ever happens or that 50 SMA as it moves on up um, on, you know, in, the, in the near future. That's at least what I would be liking to see. So LCA this week. Let's take a look at LCA, see what we're looking at. LCA, nice support we have right here at this 1140 or so level, but I want to see LCA. It's kind of in this weird like range right now. I want to see it get back above this 1350 and then start pushing up. I want to see it over 14 and then eventually over 15. Um, it's going to be in these, these ranges. These are kind of some ranges that I'm looking at. Ultimately, it's kind of hanging out uh, until we break above this 1550. Then I would anticipate it to kind of just hang out in this in this range for right now. But uh, I'm someone who's in this one for the long haul. So I bought this this guy a couple weeks back. Um, actually, I bought it like somewhere in here, uh, and I bought some shares for the long haul. And I'm potentially going to be adding adding more as you know if we get further dips, or just adding more as you know, as time moves on and I like the play even more. So that's that. Uh, we have 69 likes. I know we can do better than that. We can make a push towards 100. We, we, we hit, uh, I think, over 100 last week's stream. So we got to try to break last week's record. We like just barely got over 100 last week. We can do it. Those who haven't hit the like button, just, just tap the button, smash it, whatever you want to do. Um, some, some people like to do other things, but I mean, just, just touch the button. It's just a quick little tap. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, TMZ. Should I sell my neo my neo calls and trade for puts, or will it hit 50 before earnings again? I think it's going to be super volatile. It's going to be up and down. I think earnings could be it could push uh, into earnings, you know. It, it, but also at the same time, that's going to be it, it's it's a risk. I would never hold something like that, like a call option through earnings. It's such a risk unless you just know it's just a lottery. So personally, see what happens tomorrow. Um, it because the problem with this, the problem. Even if it dips and like, oh, I'm gonna just, let me just cut myself for a loss. If it dips, it has recovered like every single time. So I don't want to, you know, be the one to say, hey, just sell it. Like it's not, uh, you know, I, I, I see support here at, at 40 bucks. I see support here at just 38, 50, 38 bucks. We drop below 38. That's not a good sign. For personally, wouldn't be in anything near long um, below 38 uh, until it, it, you know, it, it dips down. And that, that's also the same time a good dip buy for a longer term play. If you have calls that expire this week, that's the risk though. Um, so personally, see what happens tomorrow. If it pushes up, I would take the profits there. I wouldn't want to touch. I wouldn't want to mess with it through earnings. Um, you know, Tuesday, if you really wanted to, if you had to, but just you know, for me, not the type of thing that I want to mess with in terms of earnings just right now. I, I'm just looking at the number at the, at the chart, and then you know, that's how I see it. Under 38, you know, this thing can have a down. So if if I was to, if I had to play me, I probably won't do this. But if I had to play it um, short term, under 38, I would buy a put. Right? Or I would short it. I would buy a put for a short-term intraday quick move and then take my money and move and move on. Um, it wouldn't be I wouldn't be buying it for a sustained move to the downside, but I'd buy a put. So that's at least just my take. I don't think I'm going to do that, but because I wouldn't, I don't really want to bet on something that I believe in long term. I wouldn't want to bet the downside on it short term. I just kind of conflicting, but that's how I would how I would do it. Okay, so hopefully that gives you something. At least my thoughts on it. I know LCA is killing me too. It's 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 been stagnant for a while, but that's that's how I kind of how I moved on is I just moved on and said, hey, I'm gonna buy it in the long term portfolio, and I'm, it's been great ever since I did that. You know, um, I haven't had to worry about it too much or check on it. Check on it and say, hey, it's it's moving up a little bit from my average. Awesome, you know, looking good <laughs> at least. Soul and solo. Let me look at Soul S O L. This is pushing up. This looks pretty good, actually. Um, this is this has got this is going to be an interesting one for tomorrow uh, as it pushes up over five and if it opens up over five and holds over five that's that's the interesting thing to see. Um, Solo is going to be interesting tomorrow as well when I'm watching pretty big time um, EV play but it's ripping so I want to see like this is this is the potential that I think um, AYRO and NETE have they have this and even DPW they have this kind of potential. Um, it's just that will this kind of catch on those plays? I don't know at least for, for solo for the, a lot of those EV penny plays into next week. Um, LCA is supposed to merge, but 
you know, it is where it's, it's just hanging out in this range right now. I think it's going to be great long term. We have more states approving um, sports betting and things like that. So I think it's the sector that the overall play is going to be awesome um, long term. But that's that. So let me look at Fisker. Let me find FSR. If I pull it up. Um, I like it a lot right now. Uh, it's not FSR. FSR. I like it a lot. They were supposed to announce something. Let me go back to this uh, EV, EV list. Something today, I don't know if it happened, and I'm not sure what that was. The 15th was some, maybe it's tomorrow, they're going to drop some news. So we'll see what happens. Um, at least that's what they said, or Fisker said that at some point. Um, so I kind of like it for right now. Um, we'll see what happens, though. It's breaking above this, this downtrend. Um, it's popped over this 18, or it got to like 18 briefly. I want to see it now make a sustained move above 18. But again, if it runs up really quick, understand that they don't have production until 2022. Just understand that. If it starts flying, take profits. Be sure to take profits. I think it's a good idea. Unless you're going to be a long-term investor and you want to, you know, the, cat, the tax advantages and things like that. So there's always that aspect too. But if you're someone who's just short-term trading it, you don't care about taxes right now, then, you know, if Fisker moves up a lot, I would be looking to take some profits at the table because it may pull back. Kind of like what we're seeing with NIO. It may pull back. So if, you're, if you've been in it since like under 10 bucks, uh, and, you, and you haven't taken it, uh, any profit, unless you're you're planning on holding it for years, um, you know you should be taking something. You're not going to be in the game that long if you don't if you don't know how to take profits. Um, oh, this is, oh, I want to look at HYLN. Um, Hylion is actually looking pretty good to me. So we have here if we go a little support line right there. So it's coming up, and we have some resistance now in here, which is like just around 25. So we're in this little range. 25 bucks is our top line. We would kind of have a little support buy around this 1850-ish area. Until we break above 25, I want to see a break above it. Open, close, one to two, to two candles on the daily chart above that level. That would signify a bigger move. Hylion has a lot of shorts. They have like 50-something percent. Let me pull it up. So uh, where is it? Let me look up Hylion. They have like a low float. 64% short highly on right now which that why that gets me excited is because that has the potential for a squeeze um which would essentially when shorts cover they have to buy they buy back uh and then they start buying back and then the people who are buying it fomo catches on and the stock starts flying so that's what i'm looking to see above 25 we can get a good little short squeeze i think it's it's certainly possible tumz not something i don't think i yeah not something i would Oh, no, not Tops. Um, Tom's. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, it's back here. I, I, it's actually not at a terrible spot from what I see because we have this consolidation level in here. So right in this level, this four, I wouldn't want to see it drop too much below like 350. But that's like, it's actually in a decent spot. I don't know what's going on with TUMZ. Um, so I don't know anything about it. But that said, it's coming down for a decent dip buy, I see. Um SDC, Smile Direct Club. I played this one a while back at like seven bucks. It must have been back in here, I think. Yeah, it was somewhere in here. Um, it's making a nice little recovery. So uh, let's take it. Let's see if we can put in a trend line. Let's see if we can draw something in here. Put something in like that, roughly. There you go. So it's coming down to the trend line. I think this is actually becoming a decent entry point. Um, putting it in higher lows, good sign on the on the you know broader scale of things. So looks good as a, as a dip buy for me. And that's what I would think. Um, let's see. PIC. PIC. Oh, we don't want the uh, warrants. We want just PIC. PIC. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so this is actually getting some attention. Um, this one I'm actually also in long term. I, I made some videos on it talking about it, I think, too. Tom's had 400% year over year growth. Okay, well, that's solid. So that's actually pretty good. Um, I don't know much about yeah, if COVID play, so that's that's solid. Fisker's going live on Instagram. If that's true, then there's your news potential. 8 p.m. Pacific Fisker's. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So that's going to be fun. So 8 p.m. Pacific is uh, not now. So it's like two hours away, right? So, okay. Well, I'll be watching that for sure. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. That's going to be fun. So they have some announcements. So that's going to, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But again, they'll probably, you know, put out a press release or they'll talk more about that tomorrow. So. You know, you'll, you'll be able to get that news. That could be big. That could be huge news. People talking about, you know, some crazy kind of deals, mergers, whatever. Not mergers, like deals, you know, partnerships and things like that with some big time companies. That may be something big. So we'll see. 
Um, let's see, let's see. Um, the time frame that I'm looking at is the one day. So almost all these charts I'm looking at is the daily chart, just to get a broader sense of, of these plays. Um, you know, that's that. So pick, I'm in this one. It moved decent, almost 4% after hours. So it's actually trading 10.50, which is like right here. So <clears throat> so it's like right here. Um, it's looking good. It's getting some attention. Um, they have sales. They, they're like, this for this stock to be down where it is, I think was kind of ridiculous. I have an average like right like at 10. Like, so I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Um, it's a longer term play for me too. Partnering with Apple. I mean, if they announce something like that, that would be nuts. This stock will be flying tomorrow and I'll be taking profits probably. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll have to take something off the table at that point. Um, PDD. PDD. Let's see what we got here with PDD. It's ripping. It's absolutely ripping up. So it's up a lot. Uh, I don't personally like that because I would have liked to have been in. So if you're in it, you're in it. You're riding it up. But I mean, I'm not, I don't know. It's it's just like, it's up way too much. If I zoom in, let's, say, let's take a look at like the five minute chart. Um, we got some resistance at this 155. We have some support down here at like 143. Uh, we have some support here at 134. I mean, like personally, I'm not a huge, huge fan of playing something that's up this much. So if you're in, you're in. If you're not, there's, you know, don't get caught up in FOMO. You know, I, personally, it, I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know enough about it. There's just too many stuff. There's too many stocks to, to, to know everything, right? Heavily shorted stocks are GME, SPCE, and FIS. Let's look at a GME really quick. So this is getting there. It's at that 50 SMA. This could be a good bounce zone around 11 bucks. Higher lows kind of being put in. This could be a good bounce, I think, for a nice little upside move. Taking a look back here, futures are looking pretty good. So everything's looking good. This, this should push up. If futures stay up, we'll see. Um, let's take a look at FIS too. Fizz National Beverage. Okay, this is another stock that's pushing up. This is getting close to those those highs, right? Those all-time highs. So this is actually looking pretty nice. So for me, I mean, you can draw. I'm sure you can draw trend lines in trend lines here. But like, here's your kind of trend line, and then you can draw one probably even in addition to that. So it's getting up there. I would like a dip buy, but if, if you don't get the dip buy, breakout buy. So it's pushing up. Very strong candle in the last couple of days. Buying volume coming in. I want to see it making new highs, and then that should potentially push us towards maybe 100 bucks as a natural kind of resistance level. So, so we'll see. Um, let's see, CYCN, dirt cheap. Take a look at that. Okay, so it came down, it had a gap down, um, must have been either an offering or bad news or something, right? Uh, and then we had a drop to like this two, 15 and it's recovering nicely. It's popping up 14% yesterday. So I mean Friday. So it's a good little recovery move. I think it's got some more. It's got some range. Um, this is, is relatively a low a low price point. So it's got some range. If there's any more DD behind it, throw it down in the comments. But this has some room. Upside. This one could be one of those to watch tomorrow too, especially if it continues that momentum. So I like that. I like. I kind of like it. It's got some nice movements um, as of right now. Um, let's take a look. Trit. This is a kind of a, a crazy one here. I don't know much about it, but net finish. Okay, so this is a SPAC play too. Uh, I like this. Any SPAC plays, to be honest, I like them as close to ten bucks if you can get them. That's just my thoughts. VJet. Did we talk about this one already? Let's take a look at VJet. VJet. Um. So it's putting in some higher lows, which is looking decent. Um. I would want to see it continue to do so. I don't know much about it. So technology, equipment, office equipment. Okay. So let me see if we can put something in. We can draw some type of trend line. So we can probably draw multiple trend lines in the trend lines, but here's like a rough one. Um, we can put one in here too. I mean, it's it's not like a perfect chart. I mean, there's nicer, cleaner charts, obviously, but it's uh, potentially putting in like a dip down and it's recovering. So I want to see it make a new high over 11 bucks or a relatively new high and push towards 11 bucks or more. Oh, here it is, because it went up to 11.85 in after hours. That's why. Sorry. So after hours it pushed. So this has got well, you know why it went to 11.85? <laughs> Here's 11.85. 
I'll pull the five minute and we'll see what we got. So this thing hit 14. This thing is going to be one of those. Okay, this is this is one to watch for tomorrow morning. This is definitely going to be a, a pre market play to watch tomorrow morning. Um, so I would like to see now. Sorry, it took me a second to catch this one. Um, so I want to see it pushing up. Um, and now let's look at the daily and see if we can zoom out and see some other numbers. So it hit 14. So I would like to see it get back above, break back above that low 14 level, and then start pushing up towards 15. So that's what I want to see in pre market. It may just come right back down, which it certainly may do. But if it doesn't, um, 14 to $15, and then if it break above that, that could be some serious uh, momentum. Um, let's see. LLNW. Limelight. This one's looking pretty good. Came right down to the support level 350, which is pretty solid. So it fell at 350 and then it's starting to bounce. So it's starting to push back up. I want to see back over four and make a recovery. This is actually a good dip buy, I think. Um, for those who know what's going on here with this company, this could be a great dip buy. So based on the chart, I like it. Um, GP. Green Power Motors, this is actually looking great. It's the CEO, right? I think the CEO came on on um, Fox Business or something like that, or CNBC, I forget which one. Um, at the end of the day on Friday, it's pushing up. Let's take a look at the four hour chart. I like it a lot. They just sold like six buses, um, I believe. So they got right up at this resistance level. So I wanna see a break above this, you know, this 13. I really wanna see it break above 14 bucks. Breaks over 14 bucks and this thing could get going and really start heating up. This is like a unfound EV play. I think that not many people know about, but they sell like a, they're looking to, they're looking to really expand um, what they're selling, but they're, they're selling like electric buses and, and larger scale kind of electric vehicles. So it's like the great thing about the EV sector and why I think it's, it stinks to get caught up in like the Neos and the Teslas and the Lees and the, well, te I wouldn't say Tesla, Tesla's not in the same category, but okay, like the Neos, the Lees, the Xpungs, XPEV, right? they all sell a similar product. So when you're competing, like those three companies are competing, right? They're really competing. When you can kind of distinguish yourself in a sector, like we have Hylion, right? Where they're looking to be in more the commercial side, right? You have like a sock like GP, Green Power, right? That's more, okay, it's kind of commercial, but it's also like buses. Like, so you're transit, like you're looking to be like school bus. Like if you can become the, you know, school bus provider eventually with electric power school buses, this is this is this is your kind of your niche, so that's how I like that's what I would like to see. So that's good. And you don't want to be you know spreading yourself too thin across too many different sectors. I think um, if you're in a bunch of EV plays, you know you want to be kind of. I mean, you you would like to be in different sectors. You want to be too. You don't want to be like all in one stock that's has com more competitors than another stock, right? So that's how I see it. Let's take a look at RCL, Royal Caribbean. Um, this is one that I think personally. I'm not going to touch. I wouldn't touch until um, you get more of a recovery. Like I, w I wouldn't touch this one until you have um, more um, kind of set in stone recovery procedures, guidelines, processes. So for me, I wouldn't be surprised this comes back down with cases on the rise, with you know, everything that's going on, shutdowns. A vaccine's great. It's great news for the horizon. But at the end of the day, just because we have a vaccine doesn't mean that it's over. There's a lot of stuff that's got to happen in the meantime, so I don't really like Royal Caribbean right now. I'm gonna, I, I mean, I'll, if it's a recovery play for a long-term hold, long-term swing, I think it's fine. But personally, I think you can get, probably get a better entry on it. I think so. We'll see. Um, let's see, let's see. Uber, I'll look at Uber really quick. Uber's pushing up nicely, breaking up. So, oh, it's got to break above 50 bucks. That's what I want to see with Uber. So it's got to get over 50 bucks. That could be the next breakout. NEE, I like a lot actually. NEE is looking solid. Um, beautifully strong chart as of late. I think this is actually a good play. So that's my take on it. Um, let's see what happens. Casino. Um, same thing, like the recovery stocks, same thing like MGM, right? Could be like you're kind of like casino, whatever, like resort kind of play. They're pushing up, they're getting going, but I just don't want to mess with them right now, personally, myself. I think they're going to have more hard times before we have good times. So that's how I see a lot of that stuff. Do I ever live stream during market hours? I some, I mean, I've done it before in the past, but not much. I could. When stuff starts happening, I could do it. Um, maybe. We'll see, we'll see in the future. Generally, no. Um, 
Rocket Mortgage, I'm in long term. Other ones I'll look at really quick. Generally, I like to, I would prefer, I like it when we get more people on the problem, like with going live during market hours, which is fine. Like to, you know, for, you know, you get more ideas, you get more people that can join um, and, and really kind of give their ideas and, and give their two cents in the like after, uh, at least like at the end of the day. And so like so these Sunday nights are great because a lot more people can jump on. Um, market hours, you generally have less people who are able to pay attention generally, right? So that's the only thing with market hours. And generally, you know, people are busy. So I don't know, I, I could do it. I could definitely do it. Um, PLTR, we already talked about, we like it. We, uh, I'm gonna look at Rocket though. Let's look at Rocket because I have it long-term as well. I bought some on like this dip or something like that. I think I bought it here and then it dipped and it, I'm, I'm green on it now, but uh, I'm liking it for the long-term. Um, we're gonna wanna see what happens with stimulus. There's a little, some more news coming with stimulus, some things like that. So we gotta watch and see what happens. But Want to see it start to make a, a push up above this 22.50, and then it pushes up above that level, and then 24, and then 25, and then let's see if we can make a push back on up. So that's that um, on Rocket. What's my biggest position? My biggest position is a long-term play. Is it? Yeah, it's up probably the biggest is, is FSR actually. <laughs> I think it's yeah, it's definitely this. Um, FSR is my biggest. This is this is the warrants. Let's look at FS. FSR um, is so they are an EV play. Um, they have production in 2022. They have a live stream coming out in like an hour, an hour and a half, talking about some news. We'll see what happens. I think that could be big, but this is an EV play. So I, I actually had an average in the long term portfolio, like down like somewhere in like in the 11s. Um, so it's paying off well right now. So I'm feeling good, um, but we'll see. Neat is better than FSR. I mean, I, I they have that partnership with Mullen Technologies. So, I mean, say what you want to say. Personally, this could go big time. I don't know. Um, we'll see how it goes. I know that um, there's some people on Twitter talking about it. Generally, when that happens, it could be good, could be bad. It could be a bad thing because then you get a lot of irrational traders on it. You get potentially more shorts. You can potentially have some more kind of issues with it. Um, it's less of a natural play than if you have someone talking about it a lot. But that being said, it looks like a six dollar support right now. Ice profit on Friday morning. Um, I had a nice dollar gain from like eight to nine. It went from like eight to like just shy of nine. So that's what I did on Friday. I mean, I think it's going to be good. Then it didn't really have that continuation. It kind of fell off the rest of the day. So um, I don't know. I don't know. In terms of an actual pure EV play, NETE is not really like your pure EV play. Compared to like FSR, like that's it. It's like what they do. This is, they're just this is a partner. Like they have like a, an agreement. Like they bought a portion of like the company. Um, so let's look at Solo. Solo running up huge. I mean, I'm I wouldn't be playing it this high up. Let it pull back. That's my take on Solo. Let it pull back. Um, and then let's see. Um, but this this could be what kickstarts a bunch of other ones. So like Solo could kickstart Neat N E T E, uh, and then A Y R O. So it could kickstart like this. This is this has like the early stages of that solo massive run look. So oh, and it could get going, and it could have that kind of explosive move too. So, um, um, I appreciate the F the FSR mistake. I mean, that was tough. That was honestly tough. That was not easy for a lot of people. A lot of people struggled with that one, and for those who really stuck through it, I lost money, but I also made money. So like, I'll, I'll explain like really quick. So what I did. I keep, I keep I keep hitting the warrants here. So what I hit, what I did was I was in it back here at an average, and then I wrote it up. Mate was up, didn't really take much profit. Then I was starting to scalp it. And I was like, yeah, like I'm getting good at the scalping. Like it's it's pretty good. I'm buying the dips and it's you know moving a couple percent off the dip. I was like getting two, three, four, five percent scalps left and right. I was feeling good, and then I went in a little too heavy. Uh, on like a bigger dip and it kept dipping the dip kept dipping and I got like I didn't get screwed I lost some money in this account and then I eventually cut it under this trend line under this support right here I cut it and then I just bought it what I did was at that point I then just started buying it in the longer term portfolio and I started buying it up and like not worrying about it as much and of course ever since I've done that it's just been like up so you know it, you know, it is what it is but um, they have some big news coming. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you're not in yet, and they have some crazy news that they drop tonight, because they um, and and it's great, and, and the stock rips tomorrow, then I would personally like maybe just I would wait. I would be. I like to be buying these things on on red days. I mean, you you probably hear that before, but I mean, I want to buy it on red days. And for FSR, 
This has like an $18.20 resistance level, so I wanna see it break above that. If it does that, then that's awesome. And then we may have a, a shot to 20, so that could be big. So we'll see. Um, NLS, let's take a look. NLS for like a little swing action, let's take, let's take a look. Um, how long do you plan to hold Rocket? Probably for at least a few months, maybe, maybe if not a couple years. I mean, that's just my, we'll see. That's my, my plan for Rocket Mortgage right now, RKT. NLS, I would love to have seen it come back further, but it's at that 50 SMA, which seems to be holding up, and it held up right here, this blue line. So it, it's holding up again here, so that's a good sign for right now for NLS. So this could be a good dip buy, um, for sure. I kind of like that. If it doesn't hold this, then I would look to be buying it closer to like, you know, under 17 would be a better buy. Or like around 17 would be a better buy if it can't hold that level. So this could be a good swing though for a nice little balance to the upside. Um, I looked at F FCL briefly, but for me, I like FCL around in the low twos for a buy. And then I like, you know, holding it and selling. I mean, I'm not in it right now. Um, if it breaks above three bucks, and it breaks above 350, those are some breakout points. So it'll pop after that, so that could be a little breakout play you may look to play. Um, but if not, I like FCL a lot down towards like two bucks. If it will ever do that again, we'll see what happens. I missed that opportunity. I, I was in it back here, and then I got shaken out on this massive dip. Uh, and then of course it ripped, you know, to 275 like right after that. So it is what it is. And then DM, I know a lot of people like this one. Um, Personally, I got some weird like lines going on here, but like we can probably get rid of some of these because they're not really as helpful now as we are now past that point. But I want to see it maybe come down towards like three bucks, and that's a better buy. If not, here are some resistance levels. So it looks like we got a resistance at like 460, five bucks will be one, and then eventually here above these levels will also be some resistance levels. So we have just some prior spikes to the upside. That's going to be an area of resistance this level right here. It's 480, just just shy of five bucks. Um, that's at least my thoughts. PLTR looks good for options on the call side this week. Yeah, I mean this that one's got some momentum right now for sure. So we'll see. SNDL weed play. Uh, SNDL sundial. What I want to see is SNDL come down to twenty five cents, and SNDL comes down to twenty five cents. That's where I get my interest sparked. Get it down here towards 24, 25, that 50 SMA for a little bit of a bounce, little bounce action. And then I think as we move into the end of the year and potentially the beginning of next year, we'll see some more attention on the green energy sector. We'll see some more attention on um, it had a massive move from 13 cents to over, it was over 80 cents in pre-market hours. So um, that's, that's my thoughts there. Um, Oh yeah, I can go through my swing trades again if you guys want me to do that really quick. Um, my, I'll look at, I'll tell you what I'm doing because it's that's kind of interesting. I I'm, I have options and I'll, I'll, I'll start it off with with the options. I generally just buy shares and I generally buy shares um, of stocks that are in the penny stock category, lower price, low float because I'm short term trading them in this account. Long term, that's where I have my FSR. That's where I have my like EV plays, my Rocket Mortgage, my dividend plays, my long term like that. That's what I have in the long-term portfolio, right? Short-term portfolio, this, this this portfolio is I'm in and out pretty quick, right? So what I have right now is I actually have a Zoom call, a 460 call that expires this Friday. So I'm anticipating with everyone coming, you know, with more cases on the rise, stuff like that, more and more of that happening. I'm anticipating us seeing some, you know, more action towards Zoom. Zoom kind of gapped down Monday because we got news of that vaccine. So a lot of these tech stocks that have been riding high, you know, pandemic proof stocks, now all of a sudden, pandemic science, you know, the lights in the tunnel, pandemic's almost over, right? If we get that vaccine, that's the light. Pandemic by no means is over because we got cases flying high right now, but the light is at the end of the tunnel. And so that's why Zoom took a pullback. And I think we're, it's, a, it's a short term pullback. And I think we'll see a pretty big recovery. So that's where I bought the option contract, but I also bought shares as well. So that's my plan for Zoom. So we'll see what happens. Appreciate the, those who have given a thumbs up on the live. Those who, uh, who drop a like, appreciate you guys. Um, we're, we're all, the more thumbs ups, the more comments, the more ideas. That's, that's, the way, that's what we do. Um, you know, okay, so let me, let me go over some my swings up. So that's that. Um, other than that, some more penny plays. ADTX still in this one, just accumulating more shares. Let it, you know, bottomed out, looking for them to get the emergency youth authorization for their COVID antibody test. Similar type of category here as QLGN. 
Um, QLGN, same thing, we're looking for that emergency youth authorization. The problem with them is that they fell through support, which was here, that's like uh, this $3.60 level. So I have some shares, I'm not looking to add, just looking to see and, and if it finds some support, maybe three bucks or something like that. That's where I'll look to be adding um, on QLGN, something like that. That's my plan for that. So uh, other than that, I have ATIF. This is another one. This is like a China play, China penny stock play. They had an offering, offerings closed, support right here. They love to drop press releases like all, almost once a week minimum. I think they're going to drop a press release. This resistance at 85 cents and then eventually $1. So that's my target to the upside, 85 cents and then a dollar. I think we could be hit on um, on that. Now, actually, those are some of my main swings. Now, let's go to some of the other things that I'm watching. So in terms of remote learning stuff, so we have BOXL is kind of like one of your bigger remote learning plays. It came off this 129 and it's recovering pretty nice. So you may have caught, you may be able to catch it now for a little bit of a move, but I think it's a little bit too late if you're looking to swing this one. You had opportunities to grab it a little bit lower. There's BOXL. AMST is a lesser known remote learning play, but this one's got some attention uh, on it as well. And I like, or it's, it, I think it'll start to get some attention on it. I like that one. I'm not in, some of these I'm not in now, but I'm looking to grab them this week um, for sure. Then the Zoom is my other one. But next is DGLY. Let's take a look at DGLY. This is the police body camera company. Okay, so they, they create police body cameras. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed them, we have some, some riots. This is the play that I was looking at for the election time period for riots, like around the election time, right? That didn't pan out like I kind of thought. But what do we have now? Now we're seeing some more marches and we're seeing riots kind of breaking out again. So we may be seeing some more unrest in the coming days, coming weeks. This is one that I'm watching big time for tomorrow for a little bit of a gap up because we had some issues. That we had some stuff over the weekend. I saw some videos on Twitter like that did not look good. Um, so this is a, one of those plays that could get hot. In a sympathy to this, if you miss DGLY, VISL likes to lag behind it, which is sitting here at a pretty oversold. I think at a bottom section, a bottom point, I like that a lot as well. And then CETX is one that I'm also watching as well. Same thing, simply play to these plays, it's primed. It's like at a bottom here, we can put in a, line, a little trend line. I think we got a nice little spot coming in here. Uptrending support. This is looking like it's ready for a big explosive move. Reason why I like it, because you, look, you, you zoom back, you look over to the side, you look backwards and you see range. I see some big time range to the upside. I look to the forward, I look forward, I see uptrending support, I see consolidation, and I just see a coiled up chart that has the look of an explosive move. That's what I see, right? So that's that's what I'm looking at, at least for right now. Other than that, IPWR is another stock that I'm looking at sitting at this support office, uptrending support. I'm looking at that one as a potential swing entry as well um, this coming week. So that's my thoughts. Um, um, any thoughts on ACB? I think it's ACB had an offering too, I believe, this past week. So they took advantage of their little uh, attention, right? Um, but ACB, I think, is let it come back down. I want to see a potential of 50 bucks or around six bucks could be a better spot for buy. I think we plays will get hot again. It might just take a little bit, a little bit of time. Um, once we get potentially closer to the you know January time period, they may get hot again. So DPW, I think they had some pre-orders beginning for something today for their um, power station or for something they had um, that they were selling. DPW, I'm looking for it to break above this this line. So really get above two bucks and this thing gets really good. Uh, I like DPW a lot actually. So this is actually something that I'm looking at as well as a potential swing trader, a quicker, you know, shorter term trade. You know, so that's that. Um, yeah, okay, well, that's actually a really good point that you just made um, in terms of the decisions. How do you make a decision with so many stuff? Like I have so much stuff in front of me. I'm only in a couple things. But I think another thing I was gonna make a point on is that I just transitioned this account. So the account that we've been building here on the channel is at like 16,000. The, the goal I started like two-ish, two-ish, like a little less than two months ago, or about two months ago, is 15,000 to up there, right? So um, we're up at the, like a little over a thousand, right, on it now. But again, that's some free stocks, you know, it, it's been kind of up and down. It's been tough lately. But when it comes down to it, I think the thing, biggest thing is that you must have a cash account if you're under PDT. So if you're under $25,000, have a cash account so you can day trade, right? The biggest thing that I think held me back was seeing setups like DPW or like some other setups where I said, you know what, I like this setup, but I don't want to have to take a day trade, so I can't buy it today, right? Or I'm going to buy it towards a close and I'll miss it because all of a sudden it catches on on Monday 
And next thing I know, DPW is at like $2.50. And I'm like, I can't buy it now because then I'm going to buy it and they're going to do an offering or it might drop tomorrow, right? So I want to be buying under two bucks. So the biggest thing is having a cash account and not having that fear. Having that fear mindset firsthand is going to throw you off significantly. So how do you limit that fear is going in smaller. So for me, my max position size is 10% of my account, which is just, I determined that that's the most I'll go. Some people will have different levels of risk tolerance and they don't care and they're fine with 50%. They're fine with 100% of their account in one stock or one play. That's just their strategy. It just doesn't work for me. So for me, I found that 10% is my max. So then on top of that, I just look for the best possible setups. And I just want to focus in on the things that I like the most, the best possible charts, the highest reward based on the risk, and the shortest time frame. So some of my swing trades, they don't have great time frames. Like I don't know like when they're going to announce those emergency youth authorizations. So I, if I don't know that, you know, then, then it kind of throws off a time frame. Like, I don't know how, you know, how it's going to go. I don't know how, you know, long it's going to take, how long my money's going to be tied up. So I don't go massive. I have a nice chunk and if it hits, it hits, right? And then eventually if it goes off and it goes to the upside, I take the profits, right? Um, but it really comes down to just kind of being a little bit more disciplined. I used to be in like 20 plays at once and it, it worked when things were hot. So when like the market was hot in like March, April, May, Okay, it worked, but it doesn't work. That doesn't work now. You can't be swing trading a bunch of stuff, a bunch of penny plays at least. Um, you know, I don't think um, right now. And it, to just you know have them all just hit and all just go. It's not. It's not like it was a couple months back when everything was just ripping, right? Um, Mar. Oh yeah, plug. And I look at Mara. Plug is looking really strong lately. It's just running up. Here's my little uptrend we have going on. It's just running up. Twenty five bucks is the next level I want to see it hit and break through. Um, so that's that. XPEV, pull up my EV, watch this. XPEV is, is, is good, but I think it's gonna have, it's gonna be very kind of correlated to NEO, the, to the LI, to Lee. So watch those first, and then XPEV probably trails right behind. It's got a lot of range, a good scout play. Um, advice on options for next week. I am in one option, it's gonna be Zoom. Um, and it's because I, I'm in the 460 calls because I believe that Zoom can get back up towards this downtrend line. Uh, as we're seeing more P and more schools go online, more things go online, more shutdowns. Oh, like, you know, sh cities are, are kind of closing up. They're, they're putting more strict guidelines in place, some cities, stuff like that. So I like this one for a recovery back up as Zoom was seen as one of those kind of great pandemic proof stocks. As more people home, no school, you got to use Zoom. You know, we're going to start to see more of that, I think, into the winter for sure as this, you know, cases start really heating up. So that's that. Um, let's see. Um, let's, I'll look at semi. Then what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to wrap things up because I'm going for a while. This will stay up on the channel. So if you want to go back, if you missed the beginning, uh, I talked about all my swings at the beginning. Um, but I'm personally in a little more in-depth. So go back and check that out. Semi is actually looking decent. I want to see it kind of it, it came up for a little higher low here. It's like just under four. It's pushing this 50 SMA. It's going to be kind of its, it's resistance at 460 for right now. It's got range, so it's it's down here oversold based on the potential range that it has. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Chegg is another solid one too. I used to, I used to. Um, let's take a look at how Chegg's been doing. I don't even know. Seventy bucks. I remember the days when Chegg was like down here, like thirty bucks. Um, this this could be a good one too. Um, I you know, let me tell you, like that that Chegg is how I like. It's funny how like they always say buy things that you use, buy technology or buy stocks like that you use. I I wouldn't have survived like so many like classes like calc classes and like physics classes in college and stuff if I had not had Chegg in even high school too. It's like that's like how you do it. Like if you're in a technical major, like you don't have Chegg, like you're just either a genius or you're playing yourself. <laughs> so. Um, the selling of stay-at-home stocks, the mass. Yeah, I think it was. I think it really was. Um, so I think because pandemic's not over. We're not going anywhere, right? Pandemic's only getting worse at the end of the day right now, right? Number Numbers-wise. Mara's beautiful. We're getting very close to breaking out of this downtrend, right? We're coming up higher lows. Bitcoin's looking strong. You want to watch Bitcoin right here um, as well. So Bitcoin makes a push towards 17K. Then MARA should be making a push you know, up towards 3 bucks, I think. So um, that's that. Uh, okay, so other than that, guys, I'm going to wrap things up. We have a nice amount of likes. I'm pretty satisfied with the amount of likes we have today. Uh, like I say, over 100 likes is now the new standard for the live. So I appreciate that. If you guys have not already subscribed, subscribe. 
hopefully I can give you guys uh, put out some good videos uh, hopefully right <laughs> um, for those who want to know what platform I'm using I'm using Webull I have links down below to get three free stocks that expires in like a day or like two days um, that's this platform I use it I don't actually just like talk about it I actually use it every single day trading hours from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. so check on um, if you are interested check on that um, it's, it's like some free money right now if you if you want to take advantage of that um, for opening an account appreciate you guys um, we're gonna do this again every single week so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss these videos these lives um, and I'll be thinking about doing maybe a live trading during the week at some point this week too if things get hot so we'll see what happens appreciate you guys signing off for now let's have a great week this week good luck to everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video or next week's live peace